County Kerry and St. Giles College from Toome and County Galway. And joining me here this afternoon is back with us once more is that commentator uh, supreme and extraordinaire Gary O'Sullivan. Of course, missing for the Munster final, taken up there with CDs and everything else that he's out all over the country at the moment. But back to the game here. We're looking forward to a great game of football. The winners, of course, will take on St. Michael's uh, uh, College of Inniskillen, who yesterday defeated the uh, Dundalk schools on a scoreline of 114 to 11 points. So everything to play for. 12 months ago here, very unlucky, were Colossal and Oskelga when they lost the same pass as St. Jalas come out onto the field here. I give you over to commentator Gary Sullivan. Thank you very much, John. Well, we'll start first of all with uh, both teams down here. First of all, to our left, St. Jarlitz College from Tume, and they line out as follows. In goal is Donald Dowd. The full back line is Paul Costello, Gary Sice, and Gerald De Hearn. The half back line is Alan Marty, Darren Mullally, and Alan Burke. Centre field is Niall Coleman and Damien Dunleavy. The half forward line is Shane Moran, David Ward, and Killian DePoyer. And the full forward line is John Devan, Michael Meehan, and at left corner forward is James Cavanagh. That's St. Charles College of Toome. Turning now to our right here, and we have the Colosh and Skellige team. And they have lining out as follows. In goal is Brian Sheehan of St. Mary's. The full back line, John Martin, Clifford St. Mary's, Wayne O'Sullivan, Skelly Rangers, and Aidan O'Connor of Drummond Pierce's. The half back line, Podrick Sheehan of Drummond Pierce's, Gary of Waterville, and at left half back, Kieran Granfield of St. Michael's File Moore. It's an all Derry Nan pairing at midfield with Adrian Breen wearing number eight, and his partner is David Finton. The half forward line, Michael Curran of Waterville, right half forward. Centre half forward is Kieran Cronin of St. Michael's File Moore. And left half forward is Barry Murphy of Valencia. The full forward line is Ger O'Shea of St. Michael's File Moore. Full forward and team captain Declan O'Sullivan of Drummond Pierce's. And at left full forward is Joe Corridan of Derry Nan. So the referee uh, will be entering the pitch in a moment. Brian White uh, of Wexford is the referee for today. So um, I suppose, John, uh, first of all, uh, thanks very much for welcoming me back indeed. And um, I suppose all I can say is that it was a privilege that you had to get a Radio Kerry commentator to replace me. And um, the most notable thing, uh, you're, you're a bit fresher looking today, John, than what you were the last day. But um, it seemed to be very slurrish. It might have been bad tape on my behalf. And I think it was clean the video heads. Not really, Gary. It was the way the wind was blowing into the mic in the Fitzgerald Stadium in Killarney on the day. Another uh, interesting aspect as well, John, the last day since the Euro change over what but he, he had fierce problems with numbers in the backs John well uh, obviously uh, you, seeing that you weren't present you would have had the same problem had you been there yourself uh, as we said uh, in, during the course of that commentary the jerseys were very similar so as you know yourself when you get a clash of colours uh, and uh, the eyesight as we get older is not the greatest uh, anyway Gary you know well I suppose we'll allow for it anyway John today then in Limerick uh, you saw Kalash Nishkelige playing the last day your, your, your thoughts of their performance last week well, uh, against uh, Colaston, uh, Chris Reid, they struggled for, uh, for long stages. An opportunity goal on the day by Michael Cudden uh, was the difference between the two teams, uh, in my estimation. Uh, their defence was outstanding. Their forwards will ha have to pick it up uh, a great deal, which I expect they will too today. I mean, if we go back 12 months here, Gary, and we saw the display, most of these lads are out here again today against St. Pat's and Avon. They were very unlucky that day. St. Pat's went on to beat St. Jarlis of Tume in the All Ireland final last year. And of course, as you know, this year St. Pat's are gone. They were beaten in the Leinster final by Dundalk Schools, who in Todden yesterday were beaten by St. Michael's of Inniskillen. So it's everything to play for. And uh, I expect expect uh, that our boys will prevail. Having said that, regardless of Toome, always been a great football nursery. Great teams uh, down through the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. They keep churning them out year after year. I think they've won something like seven in a row in Connacht at the moment. They weren't tested in Connacht this year, so it's very hard to know how good they are. But I suppose any team with the names like uh, the player and Meehan, uh, well, they're coming from a great footballing stock, so you've got to expect great things from them. I suppose, John, as well, it would be fair to say that, uh, as you mentioned last year, uh, Colossus is going to get beaten here by St. Pat's. Uh, Jack O'Connor and the boys will have learned a lot from that defeat. I would imagine so. And Looking there at, at players now, Joe O'Shea, Declan O'Sullivan, Joe Corridan, they were all here 12 months ago, they have learned an awful lot in that 12 months, Declan is currently playing under 21 with Kerry as well, so we'll be expecting great things from these lads provided they get enough ball in, uh, the midfield pairing, uh, very strong midfield pairing there of Adrian Breen and David Finton, they were simply outstanding last year, they were good again in the Munster final as well, as I said the defence was outstanding against Colas, uh, Chris Rhea, so I'd, I'd be uh, hoping that once the forwards up their display that they'll come out here with a victory this afternoon. A man John that particularly impressed me as, as I watched the video as I said last week was Kieran Granfield. 
Yes, yes he well, had a great, great game. I had a great game, and O'Connor inside him uh, was outstanding. In fairness, uh, at the end of the day, you, you know they, they all played reasonably well on, on the day. Like, and as I say, Chris Ree were a, were a good, uh, a good strong uh, Cork team. Uh, you know, which you get with all these uh, colleges teams from Cork anyway. So, but again, as I said, these are an unknown quantity. St. Charles to tune. It'll take a few minutes to settle into the game, Gary. But at the end of the day, I'll be hoping that uh, Klaas uh, uh, Naskelga come out uh, with a victory. You, of course, John, was down on the pitch uh, beforehand as well. You walked it. Wind blowing slightly, I, I think, yes. to, to, to the right as we look. To the right, yes, uh, as we look down on it here. Uh, you know, when you're up here, uh, it's, it doesn't seem that strong, but down below it is. There's a fair little, little breeze uh, uh, blowing along there, as you can see from the flags, uh, evidence from the flags uh, along the sideline there. So... And a very nice crowd gathered in fierce support from Galway. I was amazed with the support that's down from Galway for this game. Right, so we'll be ready for the throne in a few minutes. Just can I briefly give you the Colossian Skellige substitutes as well while we have the time. Uh, Barry Lynch of Valencia, Paul McGill of Skelly Granger, O'Shea of Waterville, Colin Martin of Skelly Grangers, Colin O'Sullivan of Skelly Grangers, Sean O'Shea of St. Michael's Filemore, Brian O'Sullivan of Renard, uh, Michael Lyne of St. Michael's Filemore, and Carol O'Connell of St. Michael's Filemore. So we're just about ready, I think, for the throw in here, Brian White, the referee from Wexford. And I don't think there are any uh, changes in personnel. Both teams look to be lining out as on the programme. And um, Brian White out in the middle of the field now having a little chat with his umpires. Of course, after this game, we have in the National League semi-final of Kerry in Meath. And a big crowd expected here in... Um, in Limerick for this clash today. Paddy O'Shea and his men, of course, hoping to avenge defeat from that All-Ireland semi-final hammering which they received. Was it 2.14 to 5 points, I think, back in Croke Park last year. So interesting times here today in Limerick. Hey, uh, the respective captains, both full forwards on the day. Michael Meehan, who I believe is a brother of Galway senior footballer Declan Meehan, is uh, the team captain for St. Charles of Tume. And... Um, Declan O'Sullivan, of course, of Drummond Pierce's, the captain of Kalash and Skellige. I believe, John, as well, you have information on the other semi-final, which was played uh, yesterday. Well, as I said, the other team outside uh, is St. Michael's of Inniskillen. They came through uh, uh, six points uh, victors, I believe, on the scoreline. They won 14 to 11 points over Dundalk schools. So I, I believe they've scouts down here today watching this uh, other semi-final at the BBC or next door. There, uh, we're just talking to the cameraman. They're covering it for the so they're doing a programme on the Hogan Cup itself. So that's why they've come along to see Colas and Skelga and St. Jarlis of Tume. And uh, can we send our good wishes to, to Tom Savin back there? He, he has to be mentioned on, the, on this video. So the cameraman was telling me the, this afternoon because he's sponsoring it, or uh, part sponsoring it anyway. And no doubt uh, he'll sell plenty of battles once the old tape uh, reaches him, if it reaches him. Well, we hope it reaches him safe and sound. We're almost ready for the throw-in. And it will be Kalash and Nishkelege who, as I think, will be playing against the slight breeze that there is there. Well, it's a very deceiving pitch, as we know. Down there, it could be quite windy, actually. From where we are, it isn't that much. But um, I would think, uh, looking at the, the tricolour and the white lines flag down here in front of us, it's <laughs> going to the right, more or less, and it will be favouring St. Charlotte's College of Tume. So, the All-Ireland semi-final... Well, Kalash and Skellige were hoping not to suffer the heartbreak defeat they had here on the 1st of April of last year, when, of course, the boys from Navin, Colm O'Rourke's Tim, knocked them out of it. Today they will be hoping to reach their first All-Ireland final. Out in the middle of the field, we have Adrian Breen and David Finton and Niall Coleman and Damien Dunleavy and referee Brian White is almost ready to throw in. And it's on, and we're off and running, and the ball is broken from Adrian Breen, and straight into the action comes Damien Dunleavy. Damien Dunleavy, he's now gone on to the 45 middle line, gone straight through the middle is Dunleavy, kicking it with the right boot, it's high from Dunleavy. What a start from Damien Dunleavy and from Jarlitz College, 14 seconds gone. A great start, John, a great boost for Tume. Yes, yeah, the midfielder, the number nine, he cut straight through the defence and took his score, uh, a great score and a great start. Well, that's the stat that Kalash and Skellige didn't need, but it certainly is the stat that Charlotte's College did. 40 and already Brian Sheehan is out to the 20-metre line, placing the ball for the kick-out. So, out in the middle of the field now. He'll be hoping to find either Breen or Fenton. He kicks it high. It goes very much high. Out to the middle they go. They'll rise for it. Up goes uh, Niall Coleman, and Niall Coleman gathers it. Niall Coleman now for Tume. Back in his own half-back line. Clears it left-footed. Inside looking for the full forward, Michael Meehan. Right, this is, in fact, Shane Morden. Uh, Shane Morden over the top inside to the attacking Alan Flaherty. But well uh, dispossessed there by Aidan O'Connor. Gone out over the sideline. And a line ball here to St. And this one, I think, is going to be taken uh, by the number 13, a man with a very famous name, John around South Kerry. 
the great John Devan. Yes, sir. Now, of course, there's only one John Devan, and so Kelly and he is in Port McGee, but there's one out here to corner forward for, for St. Giles this afternoon, Kelly. And he's as nimble as the Devan from Port McGee as well. Here he comes, John Devan, lining this one up. Right footed, it's a beautiful curling ball. It's going dangerous across. Oh, it comes off the post. It was seen by James Cavanagh. It was a brilliant save. It was either a half save. Sheen, or I came off the upright, I'm not quite sure, but I let off there, John. Oh, uh, very lucky. Uh, uh, Brian Sheen was uh, very much uh, uh, left as well there. Uh, uh, great uh, great goalkeeping uh, reflexes there from Brian. So, Kalash and Eskelliga, lucky enough in the opening minute and a half. They've already conceded a point, and a very boisterous gang down here from Galway today, and Brian Sheen goes out to the far sideline, looking for Padraig Sheen, but Padraig Sheen is beaten there by Killian De Pair, but a push on the back on Padraig Sheen. And Sheehan takes it quickly to David Finton. David Finton looking up. His midfield part is calling for it. He now has it. But he's still in his own half-back line, Adrian Breen. Outside his own 45. Left-footed. Inside looking for Joe Corridan. Cut out by Paul Costello. And Paul Costello gives it to Niall Coleman. Niall Coleman in around the middle. Left-footed inside again. Wayne O'Sullivan is out ahead of his man this time. And Wayne O'Sullivan coming out from full-back. And gives it to um, John Martin Clifford. John Martin Clifford. hand passing to Declan Sullivan. 50 out from his goal. Still Declan Sullivan over the top. Boot ball inside now for Barry Murphy Valencia. Barry Murphy inside for Jersey On the overlap there's the man on the run. That man is Michael Corden, it's still Jersey. He'll have a pop. He gives it to Declan. Declan trying to put it on the right. Back, it comes a chance here now, and it's well blocked inside there. Kieran Cronin had the chance. It was blocked by Darren Mullally. And it's outside now to Killian De Poyer. Killian De Poyer to Niall Coleman. Niall Coleman left inside looking for the full forward. It's gone to the corner forward. James Kavanagh. Kavanagh getting around John Martin Clifford. Still Kavanagh hopping the ball, taking his time, looking up. Plays it outside to Shane Morden. Shane Morden taking on Kieran Granfield. Shane Morden getting inside him. Still Morden, 14 off from goal. A shot low and brilliantly saved from Brian Sheehan again. And it's inside there is John Clifford who has it. And John Martin Clifford, the St. Mary's man, gives it out to Kieran Granfield. Kalashnish Gelligar living on very, very thin ice inside there. And uh, no, it's gone uh, to uh, Kieran Cronin. Kieran Cronin, the St. Michael's file more man, trying to get it out of defence. They're under a lot of pressure. He's trying to beat his man. That man is Darren Mullally. A high ball, a poor ball from Kieran Cronin. It's going to be mopped up here by Gary Sice inside there at full back. Left footed from Gary Sice inside to the big corner forward. This is John Devan getting around his man. Still John Devan. He has left uh, Aidan O'Connor in his wake there. John Devan have a pop. Good defence. And now Connor had it and he lost it again. Sent the forward, David Ward. High from Ward and over the bar from Ward. And we're just checking the watch. Almost four minutes gone. And John, this is a very, very good St. Charles College team. Well, we were saying that at the outset. Uh, there were an unknown quantity as far as we were concerned. But uh, as I said, any team coming out of uh, St. Charles has to be good. In the first four minutes, they have dominated here. The one attack that uh, Skolash and Skelga had there, they over elaborate, uh, elaborated in the forward line when the shot was on for, for a point. Uh, Galway playing direct football, paying dividends at the moment, Gary. So, uh, you seem to be bunching very much around the middle of the field, John, the two wing forwards especially. Uh, very much so, and uh, didn't a uh, few loose balls, but uh, they're under pressure with Galway. Big strong. Here comes Killian De Pair again, straight through the middle. They'll rattle the net shortly with one of these, guaranteed. Killian De Pair intercepted there by Aidan O'Connor. Well done by the drummer Pierce's man. And Aidan O'Connor, the left cornerback, gives it out to his uh, club man, Padraig Sheehan. Padraig Sheehan, great harassing there by Shane Morden. But the referee has a judge to a foul, Padraig Sheehan. And this now is going to be a free to John Martin, Clifford and Kalash Nishkelige. And he gives it to Barry Murphy. Barry Murphy taking on Alan Burke. Still Barry Murphy into Finton. Finton outside now to Breen. He's found him loose. Kieran Granfield is going on the overlap. Still Adrian Breen. Give the hand pass into the middle. And it's well intercepted there by Paul Costello. He was alive to it. Paul Costello was. And now he's gone tearing up the field. Two of them. There are two Jarlett's men gone absolutely clean through the middle. Nobody on him. And here's Michael Meehan. Michael Meehan gives it outside to Shane Morden. Shane Morden will have a pop from here. Morden into the hands of Brian Sheehan inside there in the Kalash and Skellige goal. And Brian Sheehan outside to Kieran Granfield. Kieran Granfield back to Barry Murphy who's gone very deep. He to John Martin Clifford. Clifford out. Padraig Sheehan. Padraig Sheehan gives it low for Kieran Cronin. Very near the side and outside. Darren Mullally is out there as well. Kieran Cronin holds possession, but Kalashnish Gallagher going backwards. And it's John Martin Clifford again. But into the hands of Michael Meehan. Michael Meehan intercepts it and gives it a cross field ball to David Ward. A chance from David Ward. 30 out from goal. Puts it on the boot, but a poor kick from David Ward. There are two chances gone and missed now by Jarlitz. Into the hands of Brian Sheehan. He in turn to John Martin Clifford. John Martin gives it again uh, over there to Kieran Cronin. He in turn now gives it to Wayne O'Sullivan. Wayne O'Sullivan cross field ball to uh, Michael uh, Corden this now Granfield Kieran Granfield inside for Declan Sullivan Declan looks to be gone inside him there's two men around him now he has it Declan Sullivan making inroads now from goal is the drummer Pierce's man he's got Joe Corden outside him but he's a little bit behind him Declan still taking on his man 
He'll have a pop. The referee has given him a free. Brilliantly won there by Declan O'Sullivan. John went from the sideline all the way into the, the 30 meter line. Yes, well done by, by Declan there. He carried the ball and eventually the defender fouled him. Just a great opportunity to get a pint back. As you said there, Gary, in the course of a commentary there, uh, Kalashta very lucky just to be only two points down at this stage. So far, Declan O'Sullivan dead straight in front of the post, 30 yards out on the left. The opening. And it's taken six and a half minutes gone. It's two points to St. Charles College of Toom, one point to Colash Nuskelliga, and uh, something I think, John, which we'll have to see in the first half, especially with the likes of Declan Sullivan. He'll have to take the ball and hoping that they're, that they're going to foul him. Yes, and, uh, that he, and that his men will run, uh, run off, and he needs the support there as well, which he wasn't getting on that occasion there. So he travelled on his own, did very well, shielded the ball very well. Donald Dowd's kick out for Toom, outside by Alan Burke. Alan Burke is fouled there by Barry Murphy, and this will be a free. Almost around the middle of the field to uh, Alan Burke and to Toome. In fact, it's going to be taken there by the midfielder, Damien Dunleavy, into the middle. And Aidan Connor reads it inside there for Kalashnish Gallagher. They're settling down a little bit now at the backs. He gives it outside here to Padraig Sheen. He in turn to Gary Galvin. Gary Galvin, the Waterville man, gives it inside to the St. Michael's File Moore man. Kieran Cronin over the top to Galvin. Now the centre half back is on a surge up the field here now for Kalashnish Gallagher. Back to Declan O'Sullivan again. Declan O'Sullivan taking on Gary Sice. Gives it into Jershay. Jershay taking on Jurl Leherden. Jurl Leherden sticky with him. Shea trying to sell the dummy, but Leherden won't bite. Gives it back to Declan. Declan inside. Poor. Good ball. Chance of a goal! Shot brilliantly saved! He has it again! Must be! Yeah. It's a penalty! It's a penalty! Yes, Brian White with his hands are stretched and Gerard O'Shea is stretched inside there as well, John. It had to be a penalty. Well, it had to be a penalty. The keeper did very well to save it in the first instance. Uh, the goal was open. Uh, your man brought him down. No question or doubt about it. Let's hope that uh, they get the rewards now and they stick it away, Gary. Well, certainly great work there by Gary Galvin coming up to the middle. And a combination of Jershay and Declan O'Sullivan. And it's Joe Corridan who is putting the ball down. And Joe Corridan is going to have a pop at this one. It's an important kick now for Kalashnish Gallagher. We're eight minutes exactly gone. A goal would give them a great boost. Here comes Joe Corridan. He'll kick it with the right boot. Eight minutes gone. Corridan against Donald Dowd. Oh, hit the crossbar. It's hit the crossbar. And Damien Dunleavy has it for Toome. And Damien Dunleavy, it was a bullet of a shot from um, Joe Corridan and Dow didn't know much about it in the goal but it wasn't on target and that's the most important thing uh, poor, poor enough John in fairness uh, for Kalash no Yeah, I thought he'd place it into the corner you know but he, he went for power and it rose on him a tough look on, on Joe great opportunity and it's a sad reflection when you get, get through like that and get no reward it can be very downhearted for young fellas but and these are good battles they'll come into the game and it's Jersey coming into the game in fairness it was a good penalty by Corridan he had the power as I say but he hadn't the accuracy Declan Sullivan taking him on again and this guy full back is going to foul Declan Sullivan a lot Kieran Cronin a bit too high for Kieran does very well gives it inside to the centre forward uh, uh, this is Michael Corden a bigger pardon Michael Corden trying to get around uh, Alan Flaherty still Joe Corridan is lost and now Kieran Cronin would like to take his yeah. point he does that was the wise the goal wasn't on and Cronin with the left boot over the bar two points apiece two points apiece and, and they've come very much into the, in the last uh, three or four minutes uh, the opening five minutes there towards all the uh, Galway but in fairness uh, Kalash they're settling right into the game now you know and take it by the scruff of the neck and one would think if they could get a few more scores ahead now had they got the penalty well they'd be in the driving seat Gary well it's Donald Dowd ready to place the ball again and ready for the kick out we've only eight minutes gone but what a fantastic game of football so far we've had everything We've had hit the crossbar, we've had two, four great points, we've had a bit of feeling, we've had a bit of everything. And now, again, David Finton. David Finton has it. David Finton looking up, oh, but he's lost possession and he slipped with Gary Galvin, does very well back there, the Waterville man. Uh, Aidan O'Connor now gives it to Gary Galvin and Gary Galvin across field for Barry Murphy, the Valencia man. Barry breaks it to Padraig Sheehan. John Martin Clifford going on the overlap. Padraig Sheehan elects to give it a good ball to Michael Curran. Michael Curran, remember the goal scorer against uh, Chris Ree, inside to Declan Sullivan. Declan Sullivan has the beating of this guy, Gary Sice, a great ball back again for Michael Curran going through the middle. Loose man, Kieran Cronin oh. in again. Chance for Cronin, gives it outside. Looking for a pop high from Corridan, and yes, over the, over the bar. Joe Corridan has got his first point of the day. And John, it's evident I, I can see from here that the full back is in major trouble with Declan Sullivan. He is, yeah. De Declan is uh, for foraging out, winning great ball, uh, and uh, cr creating the space inside. If the one would think uh, Kalashta will get a goal sooner or later if they keep making those type of runs and moves, uh, you know, for a moment there, there was a goal, and he took the point. Well done. And Darren Mullally is down in the middle of the field at the moment. The watch tells us there's ten and a half minutes gone here. It's St. John's College of Toome, two points. It's Kalash Niskelig at three points. And Darren Mullally, I think it's a, a, a lace of the boot or something that's gone. And yes, indeed it is. So, the referee, he looks to be okay again. And Brian White is giving him back his glove. 
And we're ready to go again. It's Donald Dowd with a kick out from the 20 meter line. Kalash and Skellige have weathered that early storm. Remember the one that did Brian Sheehan save it or was it? Did it come off the upright? I thought it came off the upright. Here's Barry uh, Murphy inside again to Declan Sullivan. And again he's got inside his man and again the overlap is Michael Curtin. One and one here. There must be a goal here. Curtin go saved inside. Brilliantly saved by Donald Dowd inside there. And Donald Dowd has been harassed and he's been harassed well inside there by uh, Joe Corridan. Gives it back to his goalkeeper, Donald Dowd. A poor enough kick from Donald Dowd and it's gone only 20 metres out. Kieran Cronin has it. Kieran Cronin, loose man, is uh, Barry Murphy. Barry Murphy from Valencia, ready to kick it, put it on the left. Barry goes for the score, but this time it's gone to the left and wide. Maybe uh, probably John in the first instance there would have been better off to go for the point rather than going for the goal. Yes, but when Michael Cotton went through there, George Shea was screaming for the ball. He was loose inside. Michael didn't see him. Michael took his shot to off and made a, made a great save in fairness to, to the Galway keeper there, uh, Donald O'Dowd. But had Michael spotted John O'Shea, the ball would be nestling in the net at this point in time. Well, Donald O'Dowd, in the last two or three minutes, he has been the busier of the keepers. Are right out in the middle of the field. It goes brilliantly held inside there, uh, temporarily by Damien Dunleavy. He's lost out to Kieran Cronin. Kieran Cronin over the top to a brilliant run from Ger Shea. Over, oh. unfortunate from Ger. Over his head and over the head of Ger uh, Mohel uh, Ahern as well. And Donald Dowd clears it and Donald gives it outside to Alan Burke, the left half back now. Now, Chum are hoping to build again now. Alan gone past midfield, coming to meet him is Barry Lynch over the top inside, Aidan Connor will come for this and Aidan Connor, he half has it, let's see it, and he's lost it now and uh, it's a chance, it's a high ball, it's a kick and it is a point and it's gone from James Kavanagh the left corner forward, James Kavanagh has tied up the score once again, three points uh, apiece, uh, Aidan O'Connor John uh, seemed to have that one and he lost it Yes, uh, he, uh, position, uh, last position he didn't know where the ball was for the second and uh, Galway got in and Kavanagh was uh, just one look at the post and take the score, the Galway we play very direct football. It's paid dividends every round. They've created havoc as well. Below, you know, they're under pressure in defence when they go down. But having said that, uh, it's been collapsed in the Skellige for the last seven or eight minutes. There should be an extra few scores up, you know. Well, here's the kick out from uh, Brian Sheehan. Brian Sheehan, good kick out from Sheehan, goes well past midfield, up they go for it, Dunleavy and Finton and gathered inside by Michael Curran. Michael Curran now looking up over the top for Declan Sullivan again, and he's gone inside that man, Gary Sice, Declan bearing down on speed, he'll take his point surely high from Declan, and no mistake from Declan O'Sullivan, and that's a lead again for a four points to uh, Kalash and Skellige, 13 and a half minutes gone. Uh, John, they'll have to be thinking of making a change at a full back. Well, uh, he's been taken to the cleaners at the moment by Declan O'Sullivan, and, and uh, long, well, we hope he'd uh, leave it that way anyway, because Declan is having a, a, a superb game inside. That was a great ball, uh, direct football there, Michael Cotton into Declan over the bar, and uh, rather than too much dilly dally and in, in passes around, go for their scores. Well, the tactic so far seems to be the half power line totally going into the middle of the field and giving room to these three fast boys inside in the full power line. And so far they're doing very well. And it's Barry Murphy has it now. Murphy inside for Jershay. Jershay out ahead of Gerald Ahern. Still Jershay over near the far sideline looking for Joe Corridan. And Corridan does very well, but he's beaten by Paul Costello in this time. And Paul Costello gives it outside to Gerald Ahern. Gerald Ahern now out to the um, half back or the midfield. Um, Alan Burke inside uh, Gary Galvin going for that and it's broken from him and now it's the left half forward Killian Depoyer inside to the 40 yards man David Ward David Ward going straight through they're closing down him over top must be going John Devan over the top this has to be net oh he's missed it he's missed it Michael Meehan with the goal open, Brian Sheen has committed himself. He won volleyball style, John, to palm it into the net, and he palmed it wide. Oh, mother of God, uh, uh, that was a gift. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, how he put it wide is, is beyond me because they opened up the, the Kalash and the Skellige defence, and one would have said it was easier to, to tap it into the net than put it wide, but wide he did. I, I you nearly have scored that one yourself, John. Without a shadow, without even with 10 points on me. Uh, that's a, a real let off uh, for, for Kalash and the Skellige. I Certainly is, and a real let off. Brian Sheehan is lucky, and his defence is lucky. Out to the middle, Adrian Breen, 15 minutes gone and it's be it's nip and tuck so far there's nothing very much between them both sets of flowers must be it must be set out on top uh, so far and it's uh, Declan Sullivan Declan Sullivan gives it inside now to Adrian Breen Adrian over the top uh, coming for it there in oh high high challenge there by Gary Sice he's in trouble there He's in trouble with a foul there uh, on uh, Barry, uh, Barry Murphy, I think it was, John. Yes, uh, the number 12 there, Barry Murphy. There's one thing uh, very evident out there that uh, the Colossus and Skellige half hour line uh, have the beating of them. I mean, Michael Cotton, uh, Cronin uh, at centre forward, and, uh, and Barry Murphy, they're playing very well. By Declan Sullivan to Michael Cotton, back to Declan O'Sullivan again, going for the point, looking for his second. Declan yep. is successful again. That's another one. In fact, this is third point. We're not counting the free. It's the third point for Declan O'Sullivan, and it's the fifth for Colossus and Skellige. A two point lead now, John. Two points leader and uh, 
I suppose one can say deserving of it. They've had uh, most of the lion's share of the play, but having said that, there's been let off down there that uh, Kalash getting a uh, Skellige goal. So it's very hard to call this one. It's too early to call it, Gary. A very open game so far, it must be said. G uh, Donald Dowd ready and the second. And Alan Burke has gone in full back. And that wasn't before time because uh, Gary Sice was given a fair bit of a pasting inside there from Declan Sullivan. Centre half back now, Damien Bellali. Gives it outside now to Gary Sice, who's gone out in the half back line. Inside to Wayne O'Sullivan, and Wayne breaks it from Michael Meehan. But it's gathered here by Damien Dunleavy. Damien Levy trying to get inside Wayne O'Sullivan. Wayne trying to stick with him, but Dunleavy has speed. And Wayne Sullivan goes back, and so does the Gary Galvin. Gives it outside to Michael Meehan. Brilliantly blocked there by David Fenton. And brilliant block down. And here comes Adrian Breen. Adrian up over the top and looking again for Corridan and it's gone out Jersey, I beg your pardon Jersey gone out over the line off the boot or the fist of uh, Gerald de Herden, and quickly taken aside to Declan Sullivan again now this time he's got Alan Burke and he looks to be getting around Alan Burke but Burke is sticking with him still Declan O'Sullivan outside him with him is Joe Corridan Corridan 14 off and goal across to Jersey. have a shot for a point yep. she does and it's gone over the bar oh. brilliant football by Kalash and Skellige. 6 points to 3 they lead now just 16 minutes gone into the first half yes uh, these forwards are beginning to stamp their class now and uh, we said this at the outside, if Conor Declan Sullivan and Joe O'Shea get their game together, well, it's very hard to see any defence holding them, and that's beginning to, to show out there at, at this point in time, Gary. I suppose, John, it's a very um, evident factor as well, is it? In both sets of forwards, there's very little wide so far. Uh, sure, uh, one wide uh, on, on both sides is, is all I've recorded uh, at the moment. Uh, that's how, how, how good a game it is out there. And in fairness, both forwards know where the posts are. And uh, this is Barry Murphy for Valencia. And Barry Murphy playing it out again to Jersey. They're finding space there oh. under the legs of Joe that time. Uh, uh, they're finding space all the time. That seems to be the plan. Rock direct one man to man give it into space and these boys from Kalash and Skellige certainly have the pace of their men Padraig Sheen claims this one in his own half back line the drum at Pierce's man still Padraig Sheen well harassed gives it back to John Martin Clifford John Martin a high high ball from John Martin but Adrian Breen does well the Derry Nan man outside to uh, Gary Galvin Gary leaves it Gary fell over himself in fact or fell over Declan O'Sullivan on that occasion Alan Burke has it now for uh, St. Charles of Tume Alan Burke uh, lost it gathered temporarily by Niall Coleman Niall Coleman over the top and uh, break for it Meehan and Wayne and it's broken inside here to the forward David Ward and David Ward is fouled there by uh, Padraig Sheen over the top again Wayne Sullivan and, and Michael Meehan Wayne will have to keep him out if he can Meehan will try and turn here on the left he's looking to shoot he has shoot but he's put it wide left to the wide good defending there by Wayne O'Sullivan inside and um, that's I think the second wide for two, uh, John Yes, indeed. Uh, that was from the boot of the full forward on, the, on that occasion, uh, Michael Bean. But these guys are willing, to, uh, once they get within range of goal, they're willing to have a, have a shot. I know it's uh, Galway, as I said, they're playing more direct football than, than the, the Caspian boys who are beginning to sling it around more and interpass and what have you. But, uh, so, Father uh, Sheehan and Gary Gallon does a switch there. Uh, he's gone into centre half back there. Uh, uh, Gary, I have noticed there. Father Sheehan gone into centre half back. Gary Gallon gone out to right half back. Yeah, that seems to be the change so far in the Kalash and Skellige team. And uh, brilliantly held outside there by the left half hour, Killian De Poyer, brother of Sean Og De Poyers. That's where he's got the football from. Niall Coleman bearing down and goal. Now the midfielder, he may be elected to go for the point. He hand passes over the bar. Good score from Niall Coleman. He has done what his other midfield partner, Damien Dunleavy, has done. And that's got on the score sheet. It's six points to Kalash and Skellige, and it's four points to Tume. Four points uh, to Tume. Again, uh, he was allowed to more or less to go through there. Uh, on a pause there and just uh, punch the point. They can't allow them. They'll have to, you know, get, stick closer to, uh, to their men. Um, uh, 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 these Galway fellas, there's some fine big men out there, you know. So they're going to take a great de de degree of marking as, as well, Gary. But having uh, having said that, now when we think a few more points now before half time, even though that the wind has noticeably died down there at the moment, as you can see from the flags on the sideline. 20 minutes gone into the first half here in the All Ireland Senior Semi Final from the Gaelic grounds of Limerick, and it's 6-4 to to. And here's Michael Meehan taking on Wayne O'Sullivan again. Michael Meehan popping it on the left. High from Meehan and a point from Meehan and a good score. And they're coming back into it again. Good score there. This man, I believe, John, a brother of Declan Meehan's and a fine point kick there. Yes, and a, a fine prospect as well. That's a great score. Typical Galway football there. As I said, they're, they're willing to shoot. The minute they see the goals, they're willing to shoot. And they're by no means out of this game. You know, it's going to take a mammoth effort for Kalashnas Gelger to come out of here with a victory this afternoon. Of course, John, uh, as well, this, uh, I think the last game against Cork, uh, Wayne O'Sullivan, a new full-back this year for uh, Kalashnikov Skellige. Yes, and he's, uh, let's be honest, he's met Wayne Michael Mean in, in there is going to take uh, all Wayne's experience to, to cope with this guy. 
Certainly well out in the middle of the field, Adrian Breen goes for this, the Derry Nan man and is broken and Breen has got the break back himself, uh, Barry Murphy outside there helping a lot around the middle of the field, still Barry Murphy across to David Finton, on the overlap goes Gary Galvin but Finton elects to kick it in and it's going to be gathered inside there by the right half back and it's Alan Flaherty, Flaherty plays it out to the midfielder Damien Dunleavy, across from Dunleavy to the other midfielder Niall Coleman, Niall Coleman looking up gives it back to Dunleavy again, inside for the centre forward David Wall. Ward has got around Padraig Sheehan, still David Ward, 35 out from goal, left footed from Ward, they know where the posts are, I'll tell you these boys, on both sides, it's 6 points to Colossian, it's going to get 6 points to Jarlitz of Tume. Yes, and uh, Ward there, the centre forward, uh, that's his uh, second uh, point there, he left Padraig Sheehan for, for dead there, and again, straight, one look at the post, and pops it over. This is wide open, Gary. This is wide open. It's too hard to call, as I said earlier. That is a very hard game to call. You can't. There's no way that Galway are out of this game anyway. Both sets of forwards, John. While Galway, anything is down injured at the moment. But both sets of forwards uh, seem to be on song, as I say. They know where the posts are, but they are getting a lot of room inside there. They are, yeah. And I suppose you see, you've had uh, well the penalty missed there uh, by Joe, and uh, there was a few more opportunities when there was another goal, and one would have thought a few more scores collapsed. Galway. But having said that, I suppose things have balanced themselves out because down the other end you had a few es escapes as well, and the collapsed. Uh, Skelga goal and especially Brian Sheen bringing off one or two great saves down there so uh, it's wide open Gary I, I wouldn't put my head on the block and call this one at all yet certainly is the watch tells us that there's 22 minutes gone and Gary Galvin of Wall seems to be down injured still uh, I can see a few substitutes I think below me here warming up so um, Gary Galvin, John, would be a big loss should he have to, to leave the, the pitch? Yes, and as we were just talking there, he had switched from uh, centre half back uh, to right half back and he's an experienced player. Uh, uh, you know, all these guys are playing with the uh, seniors uh, with their clothes down and so carry and what have you. We see John O'Shea making his way across here. We'll just see if there is going to be a sub. Yes, and Paul McGill, I think, and Paul McGill is being called out and so too is Alan O'Shea. Well, I suppose uh, Alan O'Shea, John, Howard and Paul McGill, I suppose, the back would be the natural man to bring in for Gary Galvin. Well, you would think to be a defender, but having said that, they, they may you, you would know what the, the boys, uh, what uh, plan they'd have up their sleeve. Bring, maybe bring Barry Murphy back and, and bring uh, Alan O'Shea in, you know. They could do that because I think Murphy has played in defence as well uh, for his club, uh, Valencia Young Islanders. And uh, as I said, uh, the, the half forward line uh, of uh, Klaasen and Skelga have won a pile of ball, you know, being very impressive. And if Declan can get more ball in and Josh Hay gets loose, uh, you know. They, they could uh, get the vice that could win this game. Well, thankfully, Gary Galvin is up again, and we'll have to keep an eye on MC Housey. A bit of a heavy knock, I think, there himself, and David Ward collided. So it's a kick out at six points apiece, 22, 23 minutes gone now in the first half, and Brian Sheehan out into the middle of the field. Dunleavy will go high for this. Oh, what a catch by Niall Coleman, but down on the back of Barry Lynch. And Barry, or Barry Murphy, I beg your pardon. Barry Lynch is the substitute. Barry Murphy's on the team. Son, of course, of the great Brindy Murphy. And out near the far sideline, Declan O'Sullivan is having a real battle there with Alan Burke. And he's fouled Alan Burke. And it's a free out to St. Charles College. Of and the substitutes, I think, have gone back into the dugout again. So Gary Galvin seems to be OK. Wayne O'Sullivan trying to come out ahead of his man. But he's beaten it by Michael Meehan. Michael Meehan over the top. Oh, loose man, David Ward. High from Ward and over the bar from Ward. They're missing nothing. There's not many wides in this game at all, John. 7-6, Toome lead again. Well, Galway are missing nothing once they get near the post. Uh, again, a great score. Uh, uh, bad defending again on the part of uh, Colossian. Uh, Skellige there. Ward was uh, allowed to go, go through. Uh, no one picked him up. Ian uh, is causing fierce problems inside a full forward. I, I reckon that have to do a switch there. He's giving Wayne a tough battle in there and to be able to beat Wayne is, is, uh, just shows how good a player he is. Galway are taking their chances. They're now a point clear. They'll have to get stuck in more. Defend, uh, they're leaving too much space for the Galway forwards. Brian Sheehan's kick out to the middle of the field again. Adrian Breen will go for it. Gathered brilliantly by Kieran Cronin. What a catch by Cronin. He came out of nowhere for that one. And he's given the pass inside. But I think Gary Sice is going back there for this one. And Gary Sice has it. He's now playing it wing back. And he gives it outside here now. To, uh, his centre half uh, to the left half hour. That was Killian Dupuyer. Broken here now to Michael Corden of Waterville. Michael Corden left footed inside for Joe Corridan. But he hasn't a hope in hell of getting that one. Gone out over the line. Uh, Going to be a line ball down here in front of us to St. Charlotte's College of Tume and it's going to be taken here by the right half or right half back, Alan Flaherty. So the wind seems to be rising again, looking at the flags down here in front of us, that yellow flag in front of him is blowing very much so far to, uh, towards the St. Charlotte's College shooting goal in the first half. Anyway, back with the action again in a poor clearance. Number two, Paul Costello. Adrian Breen has it. Adrian Breen out to his midfield partner, Finton. David Finton back to the other Derry Nan man, the third man. This is Joe Corridan. Corridan now going past the 45 metre line. Pollard, oh, you can't do that, Joe, my dear man. 
Ah, dear, you over elaborate. <laughs> Took too much out of the ball altogether there. Jesus, Mary, and St. Joseph, a great opportunity. They can't afford to be missing them. That looked to be a foul there on Keir, on Aidan O'Connor by John Devaney. He had his hands on his back, but the referee didn't spot it. Now he's gone through, and he gives it to Shane Morden. High from Morden and wide from Morden. That's a poor one now, but I actually that Aidan O'Connor was fouled there, uh, with hands on the back by John Devaney. Yes, but uh, unsighted, we will, we'll say Brian White was unsighted. He didn't spot it, and uh, it looked like there was a score on again for Galway, but on this occasion, a bad wide by Morden there. So, luckily, uh, a let off in a sense. We're just coming up to four minutes to the halftime whistle. A pulsating game of football, a brilliant game of football, but of course one would expect it at this stage of the competition. The All-Ireland semi-final up for grabs, a place in the final. High they go for it, Kieran Cronin breaks it, breaks it into the hands of Gary Galvin, who thankfully has recovered from that knock he received there. David Finton, Finton over the top for Declan Sullivan. Declan looking up gives it to Barry. Barry Murphy now inside for Barry Murphy, inside for Ger Shea. Shea is trying to get inside. Pushed there by Gerald Hen, referee gives him the advantage. Still Ger Shea trying to take him on. He has to give a free, he does it in the end. And I think, John, the name of uh, Gerald Hearn could go into the referee's notebook. Yeah, sure, he was hanging out him from the minute the ball went in. Uh, you know, I thought Brian White would have blown uh, sooner, but uh, eventually he, he, he got the message and, and did blow. Barry Murphy playing a pile of ball, playing very well in the half hour line for Colossan. Uh, this is a great opportunity for Joe Carradine to, to level matters up. I'd say it's vital that we go in level at half time anyway, Gary. Well, I don't think Joe would have much problems with this. He's only 20 metres out from goal. He does not. They're level again. Seven points to St. Charles, seven points to Colossian Neskelliga. The watch tells us there's 27 and a half minutes gone, two and a half minutes to half time and there won't be much of injury well I suppose there may be a couple of minutes John with uh, Gary Galvin being yeah, down there uh, yes and you had a uh, put a call it was down there in the centre of the, the field as well there for a, a few seconds so there, there could be about a minute and a half uh, at, uh, I wouldn't be surprised Brian White uh, and a half of injury time Donald Dowd's kick out in the middle of the field, David Finton comes for this and claims it well, does the Derry Nan man ahead of Damien Dunleavy. Outside now to Barry Murphy. Barry Murphy gone down 20 metres out from goal. Will Barry shoot for a score here? Well, he's going to have a pop. And Barry, unfortunately, has gone to the left and gone wide. But uh, as John said, uh, he certainly, John, is, is picking up an awful amount of breaks out around the middle of the field there, Barry Murphy. V oh, very effective. Very effective. Uh, playing playing very, uh, a very good game. He's put in a great 30 minutes in, in, in this uh, first half anyway. Let, let's hope he keeps it going for the, uh, for the hour. And I think the linesman has indicated there will be one minute extra down here in front of us, uh, John. Yes, he, he uh, made a point towards uh, the, the ref, yep, plus so that should take us up into 31, where about, there's still about a minute in actual time as well. Alan Flaherty grouping again, the sides are deadlocked, seven points to seven. It would be a great boost for one of these teams to go in ahead at halftime. John Devan, oh, he ships a heavy one there from Kieran Granfield. And down he goes, and Devan still with possession, gives it near the sideline to the, Shane Morden. Shane Morden middle of the field to the centre half back Darren Mullally Mullally plays a cross field ball John Martin Clifford was surely fouled there well referee there by Brian White he certainly was pulled there by uh, James Kavanagh and it's going to be a free out to Padraig Sheehan and to um, Kalashnish Gallagher he gives it to Adrian Breen Adrian Breen looking up back to Padraig Sheehan again Kieran Granfield with his handle off looking for it out here but he goes directly for Declan oh what a catch by Declan Sullivan three them on him still Declan Sullivan uh, taking on Alan Burke Declan making great inroads now is the chance Here's a chance for Michael Cotton. Yes. That's the point for Michael Cotton, and all made from the boot are the class of Declan O'Sullivan. Yes, well, again, it was a ball out by Padre Sheen. Declan won it uh, fantastically, took it on, didn't lay it off, and the score. Great football, outstanding football. Uh, Declan is uh, a superb player. Well, he certainly is, and he's a great target man, and said that he certainly must be a, a dream to play with from the point of view of any midfielder or a half hour. And he looks, he always seems to do the simple things right, out ahead of his man, good fielding, kick with the right, kick with the left, great balance. Good prospect is this man, certainly in Kerry football. Here now comes Tume again in the shape of Niall Coleman. Over the top for Shane Morden. We're coming on third. Shane Morden and Kieran Granfield. Well done by Kieran Granfield there. They don't want to give away a free here. This is a very important time of the match now. Still Shane Morden trying to take on his man and a loose man gone in. This is Niall Coleman. Chance for Coleman. Brilliantly blocked inside there by Wayne O'Sullivan who flung himself on it. And David Finton has it. And David Finton and Wayne O'Sullivan coming for it again. And Aidan O'Connor has it now. Aidan O'Connor need to get rid of it. Oh, he's got a free out at long last. I think he was dragged to the ground. But a brilliant block down there, John, from Wayne O'Sullivan. Oh, great, great defending by Wayne. Went right down on, on the boat. And another thing there, some of the they're testing the fabric of the, the, the backs. The, them jerseys must, must be made of great stuff. 
Well, it's eight points to Colossian and Skellige, seven to St. Charlotte's College, and as I say, it would be a great boost for one of these teams to go in ahead at halftime. Lip and tuck, nothing between them. We'll have a great second half here in Glimerick, and here's the kick out from Brian Sheehan. The watch tells us now we're exactly on 30 and a half, about a half a minute to go, gathered over there by Killian Depoyer. Killian Depoyer taking on Gary Galvin. Depoyer from a very tight angle, high, good, well held inside by Brian Sheehan, the goalkeeper. He in turn gives it to John Martin Clifford, who finds Wayne O'Sullivan. Wayne O'Sullivan outside to Padraig Sheehan. Oh, I was going to say they're bringing it out of defence well, but they still have it. Here's uh, K uh, Kieran Granfield. Kieran Granfield, a low ball for K uh, Kieran Cronin. Pulled down there by Darren Mullally. And John was giving the free even from the commentary box here. And Brian White heard him and he gave the free as well. And here's David Finton. Finton to Breen. The referee looks at his watch. There won't be very much more. Over the top. Gathered here by uh, centre half back Darren Mullally. Mullally plays it inside here to the corner to John Devan and to Aidan O'Connor. And Connor has the beating of him this time. For a big guy, he's not that pacey, John Devan. O'Connor doing very well and plays it back here now to Wayne O'Sullivan. Wayne O'Sullivan is fouled anyway. It's a half time here. Uh, John, a great first half, it must be said, by both sets uh, of teams. Oh, absolutely. Uh, a humdinger of a game. There's only a kick of a ball in it. It's, it's, I wouldn't put my head in the block of this and call this one who's going to win it. It's there for the taking for both teams. Uh, it'll, be, it'll make for a very interesting second half. Well, Colossus, they're going with that point advantage. They can count themselves lucky in one sense, unlucky, I suppose, in another sense, that they could have a few goals up there. Didn't. So could say it's going to be made. Some top team in the scally. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, John. So it's halftime in the Gaelic grounds here in Limerick in the All-Ireland College's senior semi-final. And the halftime score tells us Colossian is Skellige, 8 points, St. Charles College of Tume 7 points. Time in the Gaelic grounds in Limerick is uh, wishy forty. Wishy, talk to us about that first half. Well, it was a cracking first half. First of all, let me say, I'm delighted to see Gary back. There, there was strong rumours going around Ireland that he was gone from your, your broadcasting unit. But it was great to see him back anywhere and that he didn't abandon ship uh, with, with, that, with that record. How, uh, after, so, so the tapes are gone. <laughs> it's gone, it's gone so well anyway. Anyway, listen to me, an absolutely riveting first half. There's no doubt at all about it. Kalashkin and Skellige, I thought slightly the better team in the first half. That missed penalty, I hope it doesn't, John, I hope it doesn't prove crucial at the end because a goal might separate these two teams. Right. They're very, very evenly balanced. I, I think that uh, David Ward and Michael Meehan, yep. they're the two men that are causing all the trouble for Kalashkin and Skellige. But at the other end of the field, if enough ball can get into Declan O'Sullivan, I do think, John, that Kalashi and Skellige are that little bit better evenly balanced. They have a back now. There's a good strong wind down there, mind yes. you, in the middle of the field. There's yep. no doubt at all about that. It's a game that can go anywhere, but at the end of the hunt, you could, it could have been five goals to four. Yeah, I mean, Galway had uh, unlucky not to have a couple of goals as well. They had, and thanks to two great saves by Brian Sheehan and goal, there's no doubt about it. It's a riveting game. It's a cracking game of football, and uh, it's a game that'll go right down to the wire, but I have a sneaking feeling that Nishkeliga have learned a lot from last year. I think they're li li that little bit better, evenly balanced, John, and we'll keep our fingers crossed. So there we have it from Wishy Forty of Radio Kerry. We go back to our commentator and singer Gary O'Sullivan. Over to Gary now. Thank you very much, John, and thank you, Wishy. I don't think we'll be listening to Terrace talk anymore after that fellow. He's taking, he's taking too much out of me. Anyway, we're ready for the throw-in for the second half. It's eight points to Colossian Skelliget, seven points at St. Charles of Tume. And not many positional changes. I don't think if any we're off and running. John is the stopwatch off. And here we go. And it is straight away once again. St. Charles of Tume into the top and into the full forward. Meehan. And Meehan getting around Sullivan again. Still Meehan high from Meehan. And a beautiful point. Oh, glorious score from Michael Meehan. Exactly 14 seconds gone again, John, in the second half. Exactly. They scored within 14 seconds of the start of the game. Now they scored within 14 seconds of the restart. And this man, Michael Meehan, he's causing a lot of problems to the Colossal defence. I think they'll have to maybe have a switch on him shortly. Well, Brian Sheehan settling down again now. Eight points apiece. Nipping top. It's going to be a fantastic... It's going to be a fantastic second half. Something slightly might turn it one way. It may be a substitute. It may be anything. We'll wait and see. Brian Sheehan out to the middle of the field. Going far is Kieran Cronin. And brilliantly gathered by Darren Mullally, the centre halfback. Tearing up the field. Gone past Gary Galvin. Right. What a run by him, the centre halfback. He kicks it with the left boot. Right. And it's wide. But in fairness, John, with that run, that was worth the score. It was. It was a great, a great run. And they were only just happy off him. He was uh, tearing through them. And uh, they'll have to uh, settle down. So, it's eight points to St. Charles, eight points to Colossian and Skellige. 
Up now from Brian Sheehan from the edge of the square out into the middle of the field they're going high again by James Kavanagh and Kavanagh's gathered out he looks to be gone out now as a sort of a third midfielder as such yeah. from left corner forward plays it across here now to in fact as a substitute on we haven't spotted it number 18 Alan O'Hara is on to the team and as, as far as I know Alan O'Hara started the Connacht final and I think it was John Devan who came in to replace him anyway we'll go back and Declan Sullivan has it now. George Shea all in his own calling for it inside. Now is a chance. Must be a goal. Shea low. Brilliant save. Brilliant save from Donald Dowd. Well, George Shea couldn't do any more. It was a fantastic pass from Declan Sullivan. A fantastic kick from uh, George Shea. But I tell you, this guy in the goal, Declan Dowd. Oh, what a save indeed. Shane Morden. Shane Morden taking it out of uh, attack. Uh, going into attack for St. Charles of Tume. Lost it temporarily. Has gathered it again off the ground briefly, John. What a save from, from Donald Dowd. Yeah, what a save. But I thought you were off to take the pint. You know, with the wind and everything uh, to settle him. Well, Declan Sullivan is taking on his man again. Crossfield to Michael Corden. Corden will go for the point. High from Michael Corden. And gone over the bar from Michael Corden. Nine points to Colossus Lyskelliga. Eight points to uh, St. Giles and I think John that's the second uh, score of the day for Michael Corden that's Michael Corden's uh, second point in the game and he took, he took that very well and they needed that there because they were under the cash uh, just from the, the restart and again it takes a minute or two for teams to, to settle uh, you know when you come out for the second half and Galway came out firing in Arsenal and this is the game though Oh, it certainly is, and it's St. Charles back into the action again, and going for it is the left half forward, that's uh, Killian De Puyer. but Gary Galvin does well for Kalash and Ischelliga. and Gary Galvin coming out of defence tenaciously, gives it back to David Finton, David Finton plays it across now for Joe Corridan, Joe Corridan getting out of ahead of uh, the number two, Paul Costello, over the top for Declan Sullivan, and there's a man in the overlap, but unfortunately Declan unable to get to that, but Declan's not giving up the ghost, but now it is, it's gone to the left and gone wide, so John, um, uh, changes inside there. I think is it possibly uh, Alan O'Hara. I think it's the is it the right half forward is possibly gone. I'm not quite sure who's gone. Trying to to check it on uh, for the moment. Uh, we were talking there about Shane Morden. Uh, just looking for number ten, and uh, I just can't see him out there at the minute. We, we, we'll follow the player, Gary. We, we'll pick it up shortly. And it's a free out to Jarlitz. Fifteen is James Cavanagh. James Cavanagh over the top for Darren uh, for uh, uh, David Ward. And back with the action again. And it is, oh, that's a heavy one there. 45 metre kick, I think, yes. Uh, I think actually, John, the switch on, I think it's uh, Gerald de who's gone off. The left corner back. I wouldn't be quite sure, but I, I think all those forwards are around there. And the half back seems to be there. Alan Burke is at full back. Uh, Mullally is at centre back. But I don't. And Flaherty is there. I think it's Gerald de Hearn, it said, John, that's gone. You. Possibly uh, uh, quite correct, uh, Gary. Uh, look at him. Morton is still there, isn't he? Down there. We're trying to check all the, the numbers here. Yes, he is indeed. Well, uh, Brian Sheehan coming up for the 45. Brian Sheehan coming up. Reminiscent. Four and a half minutes gone. Reven Declan O'Keefe does it now and again. And um, it's Brian Sheehan's kick out. Brian Sheehan's kick out. Out into the middle of the field. High from now. It's gone to the right and gone wide from Brian Sheehan. And there's mobile phones and everything going off at the moment. We can't answer them. It's nine points to Kalash and Ischelliga. It's eight points to St. Charlotte's College of Tume. And uh, the watch tells us there's uh, five minutes gone into the second half. Uh, remember that missed penalty in the first half by Joe Corridan. Could prove costly. Out in the middle of the field we go. And it is David Breen who has it. Barry Mur Murphy has it now for Valencia. This is a free in. A free in to Barry Murphy of Valencia. This is uh, 45 yards out. And David Finton to take it quickly. David Finton inside for Jershia. Good running from the St. Michael's Vile Moorman. Jershia taking on his man, having a pop. High ball from Jershia. Declan Sullivan goes for it inside there. Declan dropped inside. Michael Corden of Waterville has it. Back to Kieran Cronin. Cronin back to Jershia. Good bottling up by the St. Charlotte's boys. High from uh, Jershia, but it's gone to the right and gone wide. Nine points to Colombia. Eight points to St. Charlotte's of Tume. Oh yeah, and a uh, chance kind of begging there again. I, I thought there was a score on there, but uh, because your man had run loose, John decided to have a pot, and I suppose with the wind, it's a, it's a good tactic, you know. Nine times out of ten, they'll probably go over for you, but unlucky on this occasion. Out in the middle of the field it goes, and it's gathered there by John Devan, and John Devan has it for St. Charlotte's College, coming into the action again, Kieran Granfield following him. Big, strong, young fellas, this guy. John Devan high over the top, looking inside there for uh, the number ten, that's Shane gathered out here to you now by David Ward David Ward has it taking on the Kalash Nishkeliga defence still David Ward over the top there's danger on here from uh, Shane Morden left footed high and left footed over the bar Shane Morden 
has got his first score of the game. It's nine points to St. Charles, nine points to Colossian Ischelliga. Nine points and it's right in the melting pot. And uh, we, we might have been saying last week uh, or two weeks ago that it'll go down to the wire. This is one sure game that's going down to the wire the way it, it has uh, transpired so far here on the Gaelic grounds in Limerick. So Colossia, well, they'll have to up the performance uh, to come out of here with a victory. They certainly will. Nip and tuck so far. Jack O'Connor very agitated there on the far side. Brian Sheehan, two good team, two very, very evenly matched teams. It's D Darren um, Dunleavy, Damien Dunleavy outside now to James Cavanagh. James Cavanagh for Jarlett gives it inside to the substitute Alan O'Hara. He was fouled there by John Martin Clifford, and this will be a free in to St. Charles and to be taken by Killian Depoyer. Killian Depoyer, loose man, got inside. They didn't spot him. That man is Darren Mullally, the centre half back. Still Darren. O'Hara's gone inside him, high from Malali and wide from Malali. Well, he's looking, he thought he was fouled as he yeah. kicked it, but uh, the referee in, in consultation there, John, with the, the umpire didn't give it anyway. Yes, uh, and, uh, and it's noticeable, as you said, that John Leherne has gone off and that James Cavan has gone back in, the, in defence. The, he scored a point in, in, the, in the first half, Cavan. He's now playing as a defender in the second half. And with O'Hara, O'Hara, Alan O'Hara, ending as the number 18, the red-haired uh, sub out there for uh, St. Jarlis. But uh, I thought that was a free in, actually. Well, the middle it goes, and it's uh, the number 12 again, Killian Depoyer. Killian Depoyer being marshalled well by Gary Galvin outside near the sideline, very near the sideline. Depoyer looking up, crossfield ball, ball, brilliant ball. Here's the chance, he took a few steps, Meehan low. Oh, what a save from Brian Sheehan. Well, if Donald Dowd can do it on one side, Brian Sheehan certainly John can do it on the other. Well, he came to the rescue there, uh, big time Meehan uh, again, uh, who's giving away a tough afternoon uh, out there. Uh, he, he was uh, true again. That's uh, Brian's third save. He's keeping Collage Day as well. The 45 metre kick to be taken by Michael Meehan. We've gone eight minutes into the second half. You remember, the sides are deadlocked at nine points each. And here comes Michael Meehan, the full forward now, to take this left-footed kick. He's about 20 metres in from the sideline, dangerously dropping inside there, gathered inside again, unopposed. And it's back out to Darren Ward, but it's half blacked, and it's uh, Adrian uh, Breen that's back there, has it. And Adrian Breen, a poor enough kick out to the middle of the field. Kieran Cronin will do well to get something out of this one. And he does, in fact, and he's broken it. But Meehan is outside there around the middle of the field again and picks up the brakes again over the top to the loose man that's Coleman the midfielder uh, uh, Niall Coleman being watched by Adrian Breen across the field it goes to Alan Flaherty Alan Flaherty looking up Alan Flaherty plays it outside to David Ward gone very near the sideline Kieran Granfield is out there too linesman says it's gone out over the line and it's going to be a line ball to Kalashnish again quickly taken to Kieran Cronin Kieran Cronin now back in his own half back line high ball but down the throat of Gary Sice for St. Charles of Tume and um, so far Kalashnish Skelly gone a little bit Ragged now since the second half, and uh, back it's um, Darren Muller outside. Well held by David Finton inside there, brilliantly held by the Derry Nan man. Outside to Kieran Granfield, John Martin Clifford gives it to Kieran Cronin, and they group again. And it's Kieran Cronin inside for Declan Sullivan. With him is Alan Buck. Declan Sullivan has got inside him, but the goalkeeper's going to come out and shepherd it wide. In fact, he's going to keep it in play. Maybe a little bit of a foolish thing to do. He might have been as well off to let that ball go wide, but he did well nevertheless. And Alan Buck has it outside there now in the right corner back position. Alan Buck, remember, he's gone into full back from left half back. Gives it outside to the midfielder, Damien Dunleavy. Dunleavy taking on one, two, three, Kalash and Skelligam in inside from Dunleavy for Meehan and Wayne O'Sullivan again and Meehan has won it again off him and Meehan takes him on blistering pace as this guy gives it back to Niall Coleman Niall Coleman oh. over the top again and um, Meehan has it again inside there Meehan Wayne O'Sullivan facing him again Meehan putting it on the left poor enough kick dangerous inside and Aidan O'Connor gathers it Aidan O'Connor for Kalash and Ishkelige. Adrian Breen you feel there's a goal for one of these sides and you'll feel whichever side should get it they may be the uh, crowned winners at the end of the 60 minutes anyway this kick is by Kieran Cronin for Declan Sullivan he watched the hop, but the hop beats him. And Gary sets it up for uh, to Tume. Back here now is Alan Flaherty. Alan Flaherty, loose man, Niall Coleman. Nobody picking him up outside the 45, over the top. James, uh, John Devan is coming for this. John Devan is going to make it his own. He does. John Devan, loose man inside is Alan O'Hara. There's a goal somewhere. Alan O'Hara across here comes Morton brilliantly blocked inside again. And Gary, it's Padraig Sheehan that held and Padraig Sheehan. Uh, number five, he's down, and Sheehan felt the blunt of that one. Certainly, he did indeed. Kieran Granfield has it to Sheehan up on his feet again, and Kieran Granfield has it now. Gives it low to Kieran Cronin. Kalash and Skellig are under real pressure in the last three minutes, and it's gone out over the line. It's going to be a line ball to Tume. 
Well, uh, the, his back's to the wall stuff for Colossi at the moment. If they can uh, survive the, the, this uh, period of pressure for St. Jalous, who knows, they might be able to break away and, and get an all-important score. But right now, the, uh, sure is they're right up against it. Well, you'd feel that a point now would take the pressure off uh, off uh, Colossi and Skellig at the moment. This is going to be a line ball just inside the 45-metre line. We've gone 11 minutes into the It's going to be a line ball to... Um, uh, Kieran Cronin, I think, who's out there, who's going to take this one. Uh, but John, I suppose to be fair to say, uh, no team deserved to lose this semi-final, really. Well, I, I suppose it's going to be tough and whoever loses it, but that was a tremendous defending by Padre Sheen in there and a tremendous defending uh, by Colossian Skellige because, uh, as we said, uh, they're right, uh, their backs are to the wall. It's been a period of dominance by St. Jarlett. They haven't got the necessary scores. Alan Flaherty has lost it inside there and Joe Collard had had it and it's out here now to Barry Murphy. Barry trying to shoot for a score. Barry the out. He's having a pot. Is he successful? No, he's not. It's put it to the right of the wide, but at least Janet has taken the pressure somewhat off the backs in here. Oh, yes, it gives them a breathing space for a minute. They needed it there. There was a period of five minutes there, and it was all saying Jarlis like, and it was looking like they were going to get the necessary scores and the necessary goal, but they didn't credit the defending of Kalashta. Michael Corden has gone through here now for Kalashta. He's going to get back to Joe Corridan. Corridan looking up, gives it to Kieran Cronin. Kieran Cronin from inside the 45 metre line, gone wide again. Well, these chances might uh, be very costly, John, at the end of the 60 minutes. Well, uh, they've, kicked, they've kicked about five in the second half, seven to, uh, in total so far in the game. I, I make it for Colossia. Uh, they need to be poppy, a few scores. They certainly would. Kick out once again from Donald Dowd. Out in the middle of the field, John Devan gathers it for St. Charlotte's of Tume. Still John Devan being fouled out there by Joe Corridan. Devan still with the ball, is still in possession, looks to be charging, and the referee now at long last, John, has given it against him. Good decision there, I would think. Ah, yes, and, uh, and, and, and about, uh, about time as, uh, as well, there, because he definitely overplayed the ball there. He has it now for Kalashnish Gallagher, Jershay, over the top to uh, Kieran Cronin. Kieran Cronin looking inside to Declan Sullivan. Declan will take on Alan Burke here if he can. Still Declan. Hand passes outside to Kieran Cronin. They're taking their time. Joe Corridan brilliantly blocked down there. But it's uh, Barry Lynch, who's, or Barry uh, Murphy, who's got it back there again. And uh, I think it was the right halfback, Alan Flaherty, who on that occasion, and it wasn't effective, it was the centre halfback, Darren Mullally. And um, this is going to be a booking, I think, John, for the centre halfback. Yes, uh, Darren Mullally, his name is, uh, it was uh, kind of a over over uh you know, but uh, that's what happens in the heat, heat of the battle. And uh, I have been very impressed uh, with the display of Barry Murphy this afternoon. He's been in, in the thick of everything. You know, he's a, sl a slender build, but by golly, he's not afraid to put, him, put himself about. The first yellow card of the day given to Darren Mullally. This is a free inside the 45 metre line. 40 minutes gone to Joe Corridan. Joe Corridan looking for the post. Joe Corridan got a good point for Kalashnish Gallagher. They hit the front once again, 10 points to Colossians Gallagher, 9 points to St. Giles and John, that was an important kick. Uh, very important, well they're all important Gary, but I uh, never saw him as uh, this present moment because they survived the, the onslaught uh, to be able to come down and get their noses in front, they may settle into the game now. Now the kick out from Donald Dow, time is important, 14 and a half minutes gone in the second half. Out to the middle, brilliant piece of feeling by Adrian Breen. Adrian Breen looked to foul the referees as play away, and it's Barry Murphy who has it again. Back to Kieran Cronin, Kieran Cronin, oh. but he's lost it. He lost it possession, and Charlotte's of Tume has it. And Niall Coleman inside for Michael Meehan and Wayne O'Sullivan. And Alan O'Hara's gone inside, and it's Meehan with the ball. Back to Alan O'Hara, there must be something here shooting. Wayne O'Sullivan coming to meet him. Alan O'Hara gives it back to Michael Meehan. Will he go for the point? He does, but he's put it wide. And I suppose, John, in fairness, credit to the Colossian Skellige defenders. They did go back well and, and dispossess him. It did, because there was a score on. It looked like there was a goal on. And then that opportunity went in. There was surely a point on. And there was an uncharacteristic miss there by the full forward, Michael Meehan, because he's causing all sorts of problems to the Colossian defence in there all afternoon. The kick out from Brian Sheehan now from the edge of the square. Position now is getting very, very important out around the middle. We couldn't really say who's winning around the middle so far. They seem to be very evenly matched and Coleman and Breen goes for it and Gary Galvin reads the situation well and Gary Galvin wins his free from Brian White and Padraig Sheehan is coming over to take it. Padraig Sheehan, right-footed, down inside for Jersey and Declan Sullivan, broken from both of them. Declan Sullivan comes forward, Alan Burke gets a hand in there, but Declan, the team captain, has it again. Looking up, a loose man is Kieran Cronin. Kieran Cronin now. Making inroads, he's gone inside the 45. Oh, Jersey didn't see that one, and luckily David Finton was behind him to help him out. David Finton back again to Declan O'Sullivan. Declan
Two loose men outside him. Still Declan goes on one of his familiar lazy runs. Gives it back to David Fenton. Fenton out to Michael Corden. Michael Corden, they're holding possession. Look at John Martin Clifford, the cornerback. John Martin going for the score. Looking good. No, it's not. It's gone to the left and one wide. Uh, I suppose, John, in fairness, unusual to see John Martin Clifford in that position. Yes, he, he came up uh, and joined the, the attack. Well, he, he was following uh, the forward who was moved right up uh, into the, his own defence. So he's following his marker wherever he's going. And uh, again, I thought they spread the ball too much. You know, there was an opportunity to kick earlier. They didn't. They have to take the Gary. 16 and a half minutes gone. A place in the All-Ireland final up for grabs. And there's one point between them. Ten points to Colossus Skellige from Carsavine in County Kerry. Nine points to St. Jarlitz College from Tume in County Galway. Inside now, Declan O'Sullivan and Alan Burke. Broken from them. And Burke, it must be said, has done well since he's gone back. And full back on Declan O'Sullivan. And plays it outside the out to Niall Coleman. Niall Coleman for Tume. Niall Coleman dispossessed well once again by Barry Murphy. And Barry Murphy, the Valencia man, looking up, taking on his man. Gives it across to Jersey but Jersey didn't think there was a man coming behind him and there certainly was and it's Darren Mullally the centre half back going up the field again gives it back to Niall Coleman Niall Coleman looking up playing it in over the top will Brian Sheehan come or will he not he will and yes he's got it the goalkeeper Brian Sheehan Brian Sheehan good ball picks out Adrian Breen very well but Breen lost it and Breen did got it back again uncharacteristically there of Niall Coleman who had it and lost it and Breen plays it outside to Jersey who's now 60 yards out from goal Jersey Declan Sullivan looking for it ah, but that's a poor pass from Jerk Shea and James Cavanagh goes for it and James Cavanagh plays it inside and Wayne O'Sullivan for the once in the day he's come out and beaten him for the front good play by the full back gives it to Barry Murphy Barry Murphy taking on Alan Flaherty over near the far sideline gives it now to Kieran Cronin Kieran Cronin looking up the nearest man is Damien Dunleavy coming near him Cronin high ball from Cronin Jerk Shea will go inside for this one looking for it well held inside by Darren Mullally and Mullally plays it outside to James Cavanagh. And James Cavanagh building again from the fence. And here's Alan Burke. And there's a man down injured inside, but Alan's still going on. He's now gone past the 45 metre line. And he's now gone past the Adrian Breen. What a run. Remember, this guy's playing full back at the moment. Still bit well dispossessed by Michael Corden. But Burke has it again. Burke looking up. Left footed, dangerous inside. Here's a chance of a shot and a chance of a point from the boot of Michael Meehan. And Meehan has got John, I think, his third point of the day. And we're level again. We're level again uh, with something like uh, about uh, 11 and a half minutes left in the game, Gary. And that was a tremendous run by the left half back there, Alan Burke. He came all the way up the field. And again, uh, got the all important part uh, goal. Uh, whereas uh, we gave away possession down there badly. Uh, Kalashi had the ball, gave away uh, possession. And it has re resulted in a score for uh, St. Jarvis. I can hardly talk with the, with the pressure and the excitement. My heart is coming out my bloody mouth at the moment, Gary. Uh, I think, as we said earlier, this is certainly down to the wire. Well, in fairness to the players, I think they're taking a slight breath of air. Mullally looks to be down injured. And they're taking water on board, John. And in fairness, must mention a great credit to these 30 players out here today. A fantastic game of football. Oh, tremendous head for, uh, for Gaelic football. Uh, this is where you see the, the football at underage level, at college. This is where you see the best football being played. Uh, they give it everything. Uh, but I, I am uh, terribly impressed with the display of that young Valencia man out there today, Barry Murphy. He's been in the thick of everything. He's giving his all out there. Unbelievable display. Well, thankfully, Darren Mullally is back up again. And the referee, Brian White, is ready to continue again. And the stopwatch tells us is 19 and a half minutes gone. Just about 11 minutes to go, plus injury time. 10 points to Colossian and Skellige. 10 points to St. Jared's of Tume. Nothing between these two very evenly matched teams here in the Gaelic grounds in Limerick. And I think now there's a little bit of problem to a Colossian player. It looks to be, I think it's Michael Curran down there, but... Uh, I think it's nothing too serious and referee uh, Brian White having a, a brief chat with his linesman over there about something else and I don't think it's, he's going to take any action and we're ready, we're ready for the off again. Jack O'Connor out there giving the instructions. Well, Kalash and Skellige will do well to come out of this one. Ten points apiece, a place in the final, up for grabs. Brian Sheehan with the kick out. Possession now is important and Brian taking his time, being very good at this kick out. So we see out in the middle of the field, uh, Adrian Breen has pulled out very much here to the left, and Brian Sheen won't, or, uh, Brian White won't allow it many more times. He's telling him to hurry it up a little bit, and here comes Sheehan now from the 20 metre line. Good kick out in the middle of the field, well past midfield it goes, and they go up for it, and John Devan breaks it. John Martin Clifford outside there, but it's Darren Mullally who's had a whale of a game for St. Charles College of Tuam at centre half back today. He has been a very effective there around the middle of the field, especially with getting breaks and, and running up through the middle and what have you.
Um, not Will O'Sullivan, but Michael Corden has it now. Michael O'Sullivan uh, Corden to uh, Kieran Granfield. Kieran Granfield over the top to John Martin Clifford. Can he make this now, John Martin Clifford? Well, he will. He has it now. What's he going to do? Declan Sullivan coming low for it, looking for it. Gives it to Declan O'Sullivan, trying to turn Alan Burke. Declan O'Sullivan going into the middle. Gives it to Kieran Cronin. Cronin back to Declan. Declan trying to swing it over if he can. Back to Jersey. High from Jersey. It looks good from Jersey. It is good from Jersey. 11 points to Colossian Skellige, 10 points to St. Charles, a peach from Jersey. A peach point, and again, Declan, the other Martin Clifford, the, the cornerback, had moved down into an attacking position. As I said, he's following his man, so he's an added bonus up there at the moment. Aidan O'Connor has switched to, uh, across to right cornerback as well there on uh, the substitute O'Hara, and uh, the switches all over the place at the moment going on out there. 11 10, Colossian Skellige lead, and Brian White has even gone now. He's gone down now. To, well, it's shoelaces. I think he should have bought an extra pair, John, uh, from Wexford. Well, uh, I think he's uh, actually living in temporary you now. Even the Wexford man, but he, he's living around Clanmel, I believe. Well, the kick out from um, Donald Dowd. Out to the middle, well held outside there again by Niall Coleman. Niall Coleman looking up, seeing what his options are. This is an option. Darren Mullally, it's an option all day for them that they're choosing. He's going into the attack once again. Being followed by Kieran Cronin. Cronin won't do well not to give away a free here. Here's a chance across here for um, the number nine. That's Damien Dunleavy. Dunleavy high, but this looks, well, it's dangerous. It's not going wide. Dangerous breaking inside there. Gathered inside. Ian has it, they'll be looking not to foul him, here's the chance, here's a kick and there's a point and they're back level once again and St. Charlotte's College of Toome are certainly putting it up to him on this occasion, another score there it was by the centre forward David Ward we're level again, John. Yes, and that's Ward, uh, four point in the afternoon. He's been very impressive as well. Mullally coming forward there, the centre back, as you said, having a whale of a game. So, by Jesus, uh, there could be a half an hour's extra time in this, Gary, you know. Certainly could, I think there actually is extra time if it does finish level. What shells us now? 23 minutes exactly gone. Seven minutes to go. Nothing between them. 11 points each. Finton goes high for it. And it's gathered by Michael Curran. Michael Curran, the Waterville man, being fouled there. The referee gives him the advantage. Inside for Declan Sullivan. Well held inside temporarily, but dispossessed there brilliantly by Paul Costello. And coming out of the fence, and here comes Niall Coleman. Niall Coleman taking on two Colossian Skellige men. Left footed inside for Meehan, the full forward. Gone over the head. And Aidan O'Connor and Wayne O'Sullivan is the judge there to a foul, Declan. Meehan, Wayne doesn't agree with it, but it doesn't make any difference whether Wayne agrees with it or not. There's a loose man gone in there. Flaherty, and now's a loose man, and this is Killian De Poyer. Killian De Poyer over the top for Michael Meehan. Michael Meehan, was he charging? No, says the referee. Is he going to get a free? Brian White is watching it very closely inside there. He may elect to hop it. He says, play away. It's Kieran Granfield who goes down for it. Wayne O'Sullivan has it the full back now, and Wayne O'Sullivan steadying and gives it outside to John Martin Clifford. And I see Paul McGill, and I see two more subs being called across. There could be changes. Here is uh, Kieran Cronin. After him is John Devan. Kieran Cronin. Left footed inside for Declan Sullivan, who has been off John, it must be said, in the second half. Alan Burke has done well since he's gone back to Markham. Still, Declan Sullivan once again, Burke dispossesses him. But it's Joe Corridan who has it. Joe Corridan being faced by Paul Costello. Looking up, gives it outside to Declan again. Declan to Kieran Cronin. Cronin, they're taking their time before they shoot. Cronin, over the top to Corridan. Surely must be the pass. He's going for the score. Cronin, he's got the score. Well, he did the right thing in the end. A brilliant point by Kieran Cronin. First, in my, uh, first collage in the Skellige, it's the second point of the day, and they hit the front again, John. They, they hit the front again, they, they had it there, uh, Declan uh, won possession, they laid it off, and they were going to shoot and not shoot, and I, I, I thought in my own mind, well, the chance is going to be again, and jo didn't Joe Carlton was loose, they didn't spot him, but fair juice to Kieran Cronin, and he had the confidence to kick the, uh, a great score. The stopwatch tells us 25 gone, five minutes left. Fenton goes high for it. Gary Galvin is stuck inside there, but so too is David Ward. And David Ward for St. Charles College. Looking up, left-footed inside for Michael Meehan. Michael Meehan faced by Wayne O'Sullivan. Still Michael Meehan has got around him. There must be a point. There could even be a goal. Well, it's half there by Gary Galvin. Meehan has it again. Across here. Here now is the midfielder, Damien Jolivi. What a block from Caden Granfield. And he gives it out to John Martin Clifford, back to Granfield again, outside to Michael Curran, gathered outside there by Alan Flaherty. Alan Flaherty is fouled, but a brilliant uh, piece of block down there, John. Oh, uh, that was uh, tremendous uh, by Kieran Granfield there, right down again. Uh, unbelievable def uh, defending by uh, Kalashna Skilg, and they need it. Well, these guys are dying for it outside there, and the mobiles are going off again, and it's John Devan who has it. And John Devan plays the ball out, and still has it. And it's right footed from John Devan, dangerous inside, gone to the silent, gone wide. Stopwatch tells us there is four minutes left. 
It's Colossian Skellige 12 points. It's St. Charlotte's College 11 points. There's nothing between them, and I think it's a 45 metre kick here, John, uh, to uh, St. Charlotte's. Yes, indeed, and, and the full forward, uh, Mian, who's causing all sorts of problems, uh, Colossian and Skellige defence is coming out to, to take it. And uh, we'll uh, await uh, the 45 to be taken here, as uh, our commentator has been calling an emergency call uh, on the mobile. So we'll await the kick from Michael Me and Michael sends it left footed, dangerous dropping inside of the hand back to Gary. And it's dangerous inside there and it's still gathered. Here's the chance from John Devan, high and wide. He was right and straight in front of the post and he's put it wide. Now time is important. 26 and a half minutes gone. 12 points to Kalash Niskelige, 11 points to St. Charles College. And Brian Sheehan is inside there and he's in no rush whatsoever to take this. You'd feel now, John, that uh, should, could Kalash Niskelige probably get one more score, it would be the clinching of it. Well, if it was a goal, it would definitely clinch it. But uh, don't rule out uh, St. Charles. Uh, you know, I reckon there's a, a twist in it yet. I have a feeling that we're in for extra time. Could be in for extra time. Brian Sheehan from the edge of the square. Brian White telling him to hurry it up. And here comes Sheehan. Kick out. Out to the middle of the field it goes. They'll rise for it. And it's once again brilliantly held by Adrian Breen, the Derry Nan man. But it's half blocked inside there. And Darren Coleman has it back. Darren Coleman outside to James Cavanagh. James Cavanagh now the left corner forward. Still James Cavanagh being followed by David Finton. Still Cavanagh taking on Finton. And success. So far, coming to meet him is Aidan O'Connell, the drum at Pierce's man. Kavanagh, high, dangerous inside, Wayne O'Sullivan. Wild, brilliantly held, a chance. Oh, wide! He's put it wide. Oh. What a chance from Alan O'Hara. Wayne O'Sullivan had it. He seemed to be dispossessed, John. Alan O'Hara got it. One and one with the keeper and wide. Well, it looked at, uh, that um, Wayne had, had been fouled. The ball broke down. Jesus, there was goal written all over it. He blazed <laughs> and he blazed it to the left. And luckily for Kalashnikov, Skellige, that was a let off because I just said to you, there could be a twist in this game. That was the twist. Well, Wayne O'Sullivan has gone down injured inside there in the square. It was a brilliant catch by him. And then he was dispossessed by Michael Meehan. And. Uh, He's still down injured, so 12 points to 11. Uh, John, run through quickly there for us, the Wilds and the scores. The main men, I suppose, so far in the in the Kalashnikov Skellige team. Declan O'Sullivan with three points. Uh, Joe Collison has got three. Joe Shea has got two. Michael Cotton has two. Kieran Cronin has, uh, has got two. There are your scorers. But the work great in the course of Barry Murphy has been phenomenal all afternoon. He's not on the score, but by golly, he has put in some, some old football out, out there. On, on the Galway side, of course, uh, David Ward. Four points and Michael Meehan three and uh, of course you, you've been talking about Mullally the centre half back has been simply outstanding you know joining the attack after attack and we've seen uh, there uh, Kavanagh coming up into uh, the attack there you know he's playing back in defence this half he made a great run we, we, we'll just follow the play there's still a minute there. well Wayne O'Sullivan is back up and we're back with the action again and there's two minutes to go out to the middle of the field possession is backed by Toome in the shape of John Devan he gives it out to the roaming centre back Darren Mullally up the field he goes he's now 30 out from goal dispossessed by Barry Murphy of Valencia and Aidan O'Connor back here to Wayne O'Sullivan he outside to Kieran Cronin great defending there and the crowd rise to them here in Limerick 12-11 still Kieran Cronin he's gone back outside his 45 gives it to Adrian Breen Adrian Breen to Derry Nanman left footed all oh, down into the hands of James Kavanagh James Cavanagh left footed inside Wayne will come for this with Meehan broken between the two of them Wayne will shepherd it but it's gathered inside by Brian Sheehan Brian Sheehan to Kieran Granfield Granfield outside to Barry Murphy Barry, son of Brindy's, of course, now outside his own 45. Watch tells us one minute left. One minute. Can Kalashnikov get a hold on? Here is uh, Kieran Granfield low for Jershay. Jershay got inside the 45 metre line. Loose man inside is Michael Corden. Still Jershay. They're holding possession. Gives it back outside to Kieran Granfield. Kieran Granfield looking up, taking on the full back. That's Gary Sice. Still Kieran Granfield outside to Joe Corridan. Joe Corridan 30 out from goal. Corridan selling dummies all the time. Still Corridan left footed across the field. It goes to Kieran Cronin, who's on his own. This is the chance for Cronin. He'll go on the left. He kicks it high. And he's kicked it to the left and kicked it wide. Exactly on 30 minutes. There won't be much more. The linesman is down here having a chat. And it will the umpire. And we're not sure exactly how much left. But John, can Kalashnikov get a hold on? One point lead. Well, ho hopefully they can now. There's still about a minute to play. Uh, Brian Smith, uh, White of Chicky's watch. I thought uh, I see a minute signal uh, going there about uh, a few seconds ago there to the ref. So we're, we're just at, at the discretion of the referee now. Play goes on. John Devan, John Martin Clifford has it. It's gone very near the sideline. But it's on the right side of the field for where Kalashnikov are concerned. And it's a free out in the right corner back position 30 minutes and 40 seconds gone one point for Colossian Iskelliga high it goes to Alan Flaherty Alan Flaherty loose man Meehan is all on his own here comes Meehan 
He's flying. He's gone inside the 45 meter line. Closing on him is Kieran Cronin. Still mean. He'll try and put this one on the left. He's now in front of the post. High from Meehan. Over the bar. The sides are level once again. 12 points to Kalash and Skellige. 12 points to St. Charles. John, it was on the cards. It was, and I've been saying it. And again, he was left unattended. And this guy is a class act. And we said before the game, any fellow with the name of Meehan or the player that footballers they are proving out there this afternoon now my hope is that the ref will blow at him that we do get in a half an hour's extra time because Jesus Christ uh, to be afraid to, to lose it at, in the last seconds well it certainly would Brian, she uh, Brian White has the whistle in his mouth he should blow it to stop what shells us as 31 and a half minutes gone we're level in Limerick 12 points each yep. and yes it's all over the sides are level we're not quite sure will there be extra time or not I think there will but at the moment, it's level. It's 12 points to St. Charles, 12 points to Colossus Gallagher. John, what a game of football, and there is extra time. Yes, uh, there'll be half an hour's extra time. Uh, we were informed before the game that, that if it was level, they'll get a uh, uh, standing ovation, the teams, and they certainly deserve it. It's been a classic, and I suppose at the end of the day, it would have been hard on any team uh, to lose a, a game like that out there today. And I suppose it's fair that they should get another half an hour. It'll be down to fitness, it'll be down to nerves, and it may be a bit of luck. And I suppose at the end of the day, uh, Kalashta will rule that, that penalty miss. You know, they could, that would have decided the game. Uh, credit to St. Charles, they did their homework at half time. Uh, very much improved performance in the second half. And I suppose at the end of the day, there was stages there in the second half when Kolarstow were hanging on there. So a draw, very fair result. OK, so we'll take a break for a few moments. So from the Gaelic grounds in Limerick, at St. Charles College, 12 points. Kolarstow is going to get 12 points, and we'll be back with extra time. Come back here once again for the second half. And um, it's uh, Kolarstow is going as I say, 12 points. St. Charles of Tume, 12 uh, two periods, I believe, of extra time. We're off and running again anyway. And it's straight away, it's uh, David Finton, ready with the plane inside, looking for Declan O'Sullivan, gathered here by Alan Burke. Alan Burke played well uh, since he's gone into full-back in the first half. Gives it outside here now to um, Niall Coleman. Niall Coleman, over the top here now, where Wayne O'Sullivan. Wayne trying to break it off, it's gone to Alan O'Hara. A chance for O'Hara, oh, well dispossessed inside there by Aidan O'Connor, the drum at Pierce's man. And Aidan O'Connor coming out of defence and plays it outside to... Um, Adrian Breen, and it's a free out there, a foul on um, Aidan Connor inside there. Uh, but, John, I suppose uh, we're looking at 15 minutes, I think, each, um, each half, I think. Yeah, yeah we're, we're probably 15. Uh, we're not 100% uh, sure they made the announcement there, Gary. This is uh, exciting stuff. This has been a classic until continuing that vein. No team deserves to lose this game, but one of them must. John Martin Clifford to David Finton. David Finton now looking up, gives it back to Kieran Granfield. Kieran Granfield, low inside for Granfield, but a poor clearance out. And James Kavanagh has gathered it for Tume. James Kavanagh over the top, inside, looking for Michael Meehan. Michael Meehan with him is, is Kieran Granfield. In along the inline, still Michael Meehan trying to turn, but he's lost it and he's gathered possession once again. Meehan plays it outside, looking for the number 12, who is Killian Depoyer across to um, the centre half forward. Ward, Ward going through again, good grouping, good kicking though by Ward, but no, he's put it to the right and wide. David Ward, unlucky on that occasion, good defending there, John, by the Colossian Skellige boys. Yes, and not conceding the free, that was very good defending, and they have to, they have to stick close to them and, 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 and not foul, because uh, if you load these lads any latitude at all, they'll shoot straight for the post, and we, we've seen the results there. So, Brian Sheehan ready with a kick out once again. Remember, we're gone into extra time, 12 points each. And I suppose it would be no wonder if we saw a few substitutes maybe coming on the second half here to liven things up. As I see Alan O'Shea has left the dugout for Kalashnish Gallagher. Well held again by Adrian Breen outside there. Breen to his midfield partner, to his club mate, David Finton. Finton over the top for Declan Sullivan. Broken into the hands of the centre half back, Darren Mullally. Mullally, a great clearance from Mullally. High Wayne O'Sullivan breaks from it with Michael Meehan, and the break has gone the way of Tume. Over the top here is Killian Depoyer. Depoyer high from Depoyer and wide from Depoyer. That was a terrible miss. That was a, a terrible miss indeed, and, and, and thankfully uh, for the part of Colossus Skellige, but they, they're cutting holes every time Mean gets the ball, uh, the ball is causing fierce problems uh, for Colossus Skellige defence in there, and it's going, it's going to be backs to the wall, as you said, uh, maybe a lucky goal, one way or the other is going to swing this game. Kick out from Brian Sheen from the edge of the square. We're still waiting the first score of extra time. Out they go, and up they go, and it's gathered by Finton, but he's lost it, and here now is Niall. Niall Coleman for Tume, back to Darren Mullally. Mullally taking his time, looking up, left-footed again, over the top and picks out a brilliant ball to um, number five, who's Alan Flaherty. Flaherty kicks it high and Flaherty has made no mistake 
a brilliant point, but what a pass from Mullally and what a point from Flaherty. Oh, yes, but he was left uh, all on his own. There was no uh, no marker on him. You know, he was picked out brilliantly, but the, the defending uh, w w was catch, you see. So, uh, Michael Cudden, he's Michael Cudden's uh, man uh, up in the tech, uh, getting the all the switches all over the place. David Finton's gone the half hour line, we, uh, as far as I can see, uh, at the moment for Kalashta. Michael Cotton out looks like, well, to the all bunchy anyway at the moment, out centre field. Brian Sheehan's kick out, out to the middle of the field it goes, and it's gathered by, um, I think it's Barry Murphy over there, it is in fact. Barry Murphy plays it back to his midfielder, that's Adrian Breen. Adrian Breen now looking up, good grouping by the tune boys, but he's found um, uh, Barry Murphy once again over the top for uh, Declan Sullivan, and now is the chance for Jersey. Jersey looking up, going through the middle, looking to be fouled with the left boot, high from Jer. No mistake from Jersey over the bar and they're level again. And that's the fourth point, I think, John, from Jersey. Well, this is his third, actually, but uh, what a vital one uh, to get an extra time. And you need fellas now to, uh, that's willing to take responsibility and take the game by the scruff of the neck if they want to go on and win it. And fair dues to Jersey, he took his score very well there. Well, it must be said, John, I suppose as well, Alan Burke has done tremendously well since he's gone in there full-back on Declan O'Sullivan. Yes, De Declan hasn't been as effective in the second half uh, uh, or in uh, extra time at the moment. And credit uh, the good... Uh, of Alan Burke. Donald Dowd kick out out to the middle of the field. Oh, what a catch by Adrian Breen. Adrian Breen has it. Adrian inside to Declan O'Sullivan. Declan, one man coming off at his um, uh, Kieran Cronin inside now to Jersey. Back to Cronin. He'll shoot surely. Oh, that's a lovely score for Kalash Nishkelega. Finished off by. Um, Kieran Cronin, but started with that magnificent piece of feeling from Adrian Breen. Oh, absolutely. It was a beautiful move, laid off by uh, Declan Sullivan. Then uh, Kieran Cronin on the run took his score. That's Cronin's third point of the game as well. 14 points to Kalash Nuskelega, 13 points to St. Charles of Tume, and the kick out from Donald Dowd. The stopwatch tells us there's five minutes gone into the first period of extra time. Up goes Cronin again for, for Kalash Nuskelega, and he's gathered it. And side now to Joe Carradine, who's been quite enough in the last 20 minutes or so. But Joe has possession here now, very near the sideline. Paul Costello with him, gives it back to John Martin Clifford. Inside now to Declan O'Sullivan. Declan took his eye off it, and Alan Burke has gathered it. And Alan Burke has it inside here now. Still Alan Burke. Gone out to the gone out over the sideline, and this is going to be a line to it's going to be a line ball. It's not, in fact, it's kept inside, and it's Adrian Breen who has it. And Adrian Breen gives it in over the top and gives it line to ball, it's, line ball. Line ball. it's a line ball to Tume, I think. Yep. And this is going to be taken down here by the number 13, John Devan. John Devan ready to take this now. 14 points to Kalash Nuskelega, 13 points to St. Charles College. Remember, we're gone into extra time. And here now is uh, Aidan Connor who has it. Aidan O'Connor for uh, uh, Kalash Nuskelega back there. We're five minutes gone into the first period of time. And it's Gary Galvin who has it here now. Gary Galvin fouled back there, the referee giving him the advantage. And he gives it back to Wayne O'Sullivan. Wayne O'Sullivan outside to Jershay, very near the sideline. It's gone out over the line. This is going to be a line ball. I think, uh, John, to uh, Tume, I think, isn't it? Yeah, they'd be better off to clear the ball first time out of defence. Uh, a lot of old bloody dilly-dallying shot passing in there and with the net result, the ball in the road, up over the line. And it's great that we have the guard DJ. Oh, that's, uh, we have been joined from the Tom Stavon and Casimir by David Reardon on the phone as well at the moment, just to give him a mention. This is a game of football here, Gary, this afternoon. The line ball to be taken for Tume. It's a high ball, it's a good ball, and it's a brilliant score! What a kick, they're level again, 14 points to Kalash Nishkelega, 14 points to St. Charles College in Tum. And I think uh, that, I'm not quite sure, John, who kicked that one. It looked to be a Killian De Poer, I think, was it, that kicked it. But anyway, from the sideline, what a kick. Absolutely, a, a brilliant score. But again, had, had Kalash to clear the ball out of the fence beside the, the shot passing game, it was the centre forward, David Ward, who got the score. That's his fifth score of the afternoon. He's having a great game game, sides dead locked again, 14 points apiece, Brian Sheehan's kick out, out to the middle of the field it goes, John Martin Clifford gathered by Finton of Derry Nan, very well for Kalash Nuskelega, back to Kieran Cronin, he in turn gives it to Adrian Breen, Adrian Breen looking up, gives a good ball inside for Joe Corridan, Corridan has won it for Kalash Nuskelega, three uh, two men around him, still Joe Corridan, he needs to get rid of this fairly quick, he does, he gives it to Adrian Breen, Adrian looking up, Adrian was fouled and that's a free in right down here in front of us, took Kalash Nuskelega and David Finton takes it quickly. There was no need of that for David Finton. He's given possession straight back into, into Tume. Kieran Granfield in a race for this. Gone out off the boot of Kieran Granfield. Line ball to, to uh, Tume. Oh, it's, it's going to, uh, down to the wire again. It's a very hard game to, to call. Who's going to come out uh, victors here this afternoon? Galway are pressing very hard at the moment, uh, Gary. 
Niall Coleman to take this one, but the referee is, or the linesman is pulling him back a little bit. And Niall Coleman to take it 14 each. Eight minutes gone into the first period of extra time. And now the linesman have his flag up aloft, which would mean that he took it from an incorrect position. Which could very well mean, I think, John, that Brian White should hop the ball here. Yes, uh, it looks like uh, that will be the, the decision he's coming across with the ball. We'll just uh, await the outcome of it. But uh, obviously, he's not going to allow Galway to take that kick again. He's definitely going to be throwing the linesman is calling it over. So. Yeah, it's going to be a hot ball here. Brian, Brian White ready to throw it in. Uh, Adrian Breen ready to go up with it with John Devan, the two of them. That's who it's going to be. It's up. And oh, that was a push, definitely. Certainly, Devan pushed him before that one was even gathered, but anyway, play away, says the referee. I think I'd have to give Brian White my glasses. He was standing in front of him. Jesus, push. Niall Coleman has it. Niall Coleman plays it across to the substitute, Alan O'Hara. Alan O'Hara taking on uh, Aidan Connor. Alan O'Hara gives it inside here to the uh, number 10, that's Shane Morden. Shane Morden taking on Kieran Granfield, and he's giving Granfield enough to do it. But credit to Granfield, he's sticking with him. A high kick from Morden. Oh. Dangerous inside, dropping inside. Oh, Sheen is in trouble! And it's gathered off the line, saved inside there, and Alan O'Hara has it. Alan O'Hara across to the centre forward, David Ward. David Ward outside to Coleman. Or, uh, to Mal this is Mullally. Left footed from Mullally. And over the bar from Mullally. And St. Charlotte's of College of Tume lead again. 15-14. But, John, that could have been a goal very easily. Oh, very, 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 very close again. Uh, or has to out our mouth. But uh, one thing that's evident in, uh, in extra time is the moment that Galway are looking the stronger side of St. Charlotte's. Uh, you know, they're looking the stronger side. And unless uh, Kalashnikov can put together a, a few moves, I think we could be in trouble. 15 points to St. Charlotte's. 14 points to Kalashnikov Skellige. We're coming on nine and a half minutes of the first period of extra time I think it's 15 minutes a half but it could very well be a half we're not sure Adrian Breen goes for this one and loses it and Michael Curran is brought down there unceremoniously by Niall Coleman and Niall Coleman's got a bit of a ticking and now here comes John Martin Clifford but a wayward kick from John Martin Clifford that's a very that's a, a hospital pass as they call it but Kalash is going to get well to win it back and Joe Corridan has it and Joe Corridan inside for Jersey Jersey there's two men against him he'll try and take on the first one of them. he's trying to get inside him he hasn't he's lost possession but he has it again back to John Martin Clifford John Martin Clifford 14 out from goal fouled inside the referee says play away is coming back to Jersey he needs to put it on the left leg good defending by St. Charles College referee very close to the action and Darren Mullally has it and Darren Mullally clears the lines Kieran Granfield going for this one broken into the hands of Michael Curran the Waterfall man Michael Curran outside to Kieran Granfield Granfield ahead to Adrian Breen Breen down here in front of the stand here still Adrian Breen left foot it flattened as he was taken at absolutely total flattened taken out of it wasn't quite sure was it by uh, Shane Morden but either way it's a 30 metre free John to uh, Lashen Skellige yeah, from where the ball landed opportunity now for Joe Carlton to, to kick the equaliser and uh, Adrian uh, took a shift to hard knock and you know another thing that's going to play a part Gary at this stage of course is fitness uh, your fellas beginning to cramp uh, and what have you down there so uh, mistakes are going to be made in, on both sides so one of those uh, could change the course of the game as well well Adrian Breen is still down getting a bit of medical attention there I think he's okay this is an important kick from Joe Carradon he's about 25 metres in from the sideline a little bit to the left of the post as he looks at it and he's on the 30 metre line and Joe Corridan there looks to be a sub I think coming on into the team Alan O'Shea of Waterville is into the team and John Alan O'Shea uh, played a good part in the Colossal Crease Reel win yes indeed uh, he, he came on as well uh, that day we're just uh, checking out to see who, who's, uh, who's made way so we'll, we'll sort that out in a moment we're so engrossed in the play and what's happening all around us here is unbelievable stuff even the Mintos are in the middle of the sideline or, or in the centre of the field being called the shoulders John Martin Clifford is going off the, the team John Martin Clifford going off and Alan O'Shea going on Alan O'Shea coming on well it's a um it's a forward for a defender. Now, who's going to go back in the backs? We'll have to wait and see. But anyway, this is the kick to John or to Joe Corridan. 15 to St. Charles, 14 to Galashnish Gallagher. Make it 15 points each because they're level again. A terrific kick, John, from the boot of Joe Corridan. Oh, a great score, a great score, and a very vital score at this time in the match. We're about three minutes from the first period of extra time. And I think the move is that Michael Corridan looks to be gone back in the backs, and Alan Shea, I think, is on in the half forward. Uh, that is uh, the, the switch they had to be uh, once Martin Clifford was uh, being brought off they had to bring somebody back in, uh, to replace him 
The kick out down to the middle of the field. Breen goes high for it, and Breen and Alan O'Shea gets his first touch. Gives it back to um, Kieran Cronin. Kieran Cronin, yes, playing very well today for Kalashnikov Skellige. Low ball inside for Declan O'Sullivan. Loose man, Alan Shea. Give it to him and give it to him quick. Now comes Joe Corridan. Oh, what poor pass from Declan Sullivan. Alan Flaherty has it. Alan Flaherty outside to Darren Mullally. Darren Mullally over the top for Niall Coleman. Loose man outside all on his own. They didn't spot him. O'Sullivan coming out for it, Wayne O'Sullivan does well and Michael Cotton comes for it and Michael Cotton played it the wrong way good defending Masai there by Hayden, Cor Hayden uh, O'Connor and Michael Cotton gathers it again and gives it back here to Adrian Breen Breen to Alan O'Shea, Alan O'Shea, it'll take him a while to get into it but he's a fresh pair of legs and here now down in front of us is Kieran Cronin Kieran Cronin back to Adrian Breen, remember it's 15 points each and 13 minutes gone in the first half Back here now to Kieran Cronin. Kieran Cronin, there's loose men everywhere, but Cronin is not picking out one of them. Now he's got Padraig Sheen, and now it's Adrian Breen. The long punch, surely, from Breen. He does inside for Josh Shea. Shea does well to win it. He's lost it again, but he's got it back again. Still Josh Shea. Three men from Toome around him. It's gone out over the line. It's a line ball to Toome. Yes, indeed, uh, but uh, the short passing game might have maybe a first uh, direct ball in would pay a better dividends because with fellas' legs uh, getting uh, tired and everything else, uh, and no score can come off it. Shane Morden taking on Michael Corden, the two number 10. Still Shane Morden took a few steps, referee left him off with it. Brilliantly dispossessed by Padraig Sheehan of Drummond. Padraig Sheehan looking up now, left-footed across to a man on his own. Alan O'Shea or Barry Murphy? Which one of them? It's Barry Murphy. There must be a score from this, surely. Barry Murphy inside the 25, taking a little bit too much out of it. Look to be fouled. The referee says, play away, Alan O'Shea, come for it. The chance is gone. The chance was there to shoot. Declan O'Sullivan has it now. Declan taking his time, coming into the middle of the goal. Still Declan O'Sullivan, good defending, it must be said by St. Charles College. Still Declan O'Sullivan taking his time, giving it back to Gary Galvin. Gary Galvin, there's a loose man, or there's an injured man gone down inside. That's Barry Murphy. It's gone out over the sideline. And originally the chance was there and they didn't take it. It was, yeah, and you see, too much, uh, all, as I said, the diddly dally football, and, and, and it ends up with a, a line ball for, for Galway when a, an opportunity presents itself for a score there. They'll have to kick the direct ball in because they're killing themselves anyway at this stage in the game. So. Well, the stopwatch tells us there's 14 and a half, well, almost 15 minutes gone now. They're going down with cramp here now. We look to be very near the first period of extra time. And I see Brian, Wheat, Brian White is coming out here to the linesman and signalling what time will be left. I think we're looking at about a minute or two, John, I think. Well, uh, about a minute to be about uh, the most that could be in it. And again, we have uh, one of our forwards down, down with cramp inside. So it's One minute of, of, of injury time will be played here in the opening half of extra time. 50th, yes, Declan O'Sullivan was down there injured. 15 points to St. Charles, 15 points to Colossus Skellige. Niall Coleman had it, but he lost it. And Darren Mullally. And every time this fellow gets the ball, it's danger for Colossus Skellige because he's attacking very much. Dangerous inside again. Kieran Granfield comes for it, calls it, wins it, does well, but lost it. Michael Meehan with the chance. Michael Meehan with the score. Kieran Granfield had it temporarily, but lost it. And Charles hit the front once again. They do, and that's a psychological score just coming up to half time and extra time. You know, scores like that'll that'll win win, that'll win games. So right now, anyway, Gary is 16 points for St. Giles, 15 for Kalashnikov Skellige. We're on half time of extra time, and it's nice to, to know we're being joined by Sergeant Pat O'Mahony and in the Lestol Garda station this afternoon. Whoever is paying for the phone call will will check that later. Brian Sheen's kick out, and it's in the first period of extra time and Brian White is shouting to turn around straight away the halftime score we'll take a break for a few seconds it's St. Charlotte 16 points Kalashnikov Skellige 15 points for the throw in once again 16 points to St. Charlotte 15 to Kalashnikov Skellige I suppose John it would be fair to say now that uh, Another point or two for St. Charles and Kalasha could be in trouble. Yes, it would be a hard at this stage to, to see them coming back. If anything goes two or three points clear, it's going to take a mammoth effort to, to, you know, to, to get back at this stage of the game, especially the effort is cramping and everything, uh, pressure out there. So if Kalasha could get on terms again, I would be hopeful in that they might go on and just take it. Well, we're back with the action again, and this is the final 15 minutes, and it's uh, Charles College into the attack again, and it's looking inside for Meehan, but Wayne O'Sullivan coming for this, and Wayne has lost it, but Wayne O'Sullivan was fouled there by a combination of Alan O'Hara and uh, Michael Meehan and it's a free and quickly taken and it's Kieran Cronin Kieran Cronin now for St Michael Svile Moran for Kalash Nishkelige back to uh, Adrian Breen Adrian they need to get it out of defence fairly quickly Gary Gallagher now to David Finton Finton 
On the overlap is Galvin again. Referee is giving him the advantage. But the, the, the delivery is too slow so far from the Kalash and Skellige's point of view. Joe Corridan coming for this. Uh, Michael Corridan inside there. So too is Corridan and Corridan has won it. Over the top now is a chance. Alan O'Shea going for the kick. Going for the score and putting it wide. He would be better advised there maybe John to have taken his time a little bit. Yeah, he, he was on his own. He could have brought the ball in and... Uh Declan O'Sullivan, Joe O'Shea, come off his marker as well. He, he was loose. That's a great opportunity. Gonna beggy. Well, just a minute into the second period of extra time. The kick out from Donald Dowd. Down here now in front of us, we see the, the Kalash and Skellige Mentors have come over from the far sideline to the near sideline, the stand sideline. Here now is Kieran Cronin, who's had a whale of a game today for Kalash and Skellige. Uh, David Finton, good looming ball inside, looking for Jershia. Can he get it? She has it inside, looking for a point. High from Jershia, and over the bar from Jershia, and they're level again. That was important from a psychological point of view that Kalash and Skellige had to score first, John, in this period of extra time. Well, they had, we just said that, uh, that you weren't vital that they didn't go two points behind in actual fact there was a goal looming for a second but George Fair used him uh, he took his point uh, pr good thinking on his part 16 points apiece what a game of football credit to both sets of players out there an absolute brilliant game of football indeed as I said before nobody deserves to lose but one of them will who's it going to be who's going to be in the final looking for uh, Declan O'Sullivan inside here uh, gone out over the sideline and this is going to be a line ball to St. Charles College and to be taken by Alan Burke Alan Burke inside there, in the right corner back position, Alan Burke to John Devan, the roaming corner forward. This guy's probably around the third midfielder now. Inside for a bit of holding there, I would think, on Kieran Granfield. The referee says play away, but the linesman now has his flag up. And this will be a line ball to Kalash and Skellige. And it's Kieran Granfield who has it outside there with Shane Morden. And Kieran Granfield is going to take it. Now, he'd be well advised to get this one well out of defence and as far away from his own goal as possible. Shot passing is not the game now, and he goes cross field ball and a good ball to Alan O'Shea. Alan O'Shea, punch pass inside to uh, Michael Corden. Michael Corden from Waterville. Still Alan O'Shea. Low, yeah. low inside now to Alan O'Shea. Chance now for O'Shea. He'll put it on the left boot. He goes for a score. Yeah. Oh, what a kick! And the crowd rise to that one. And the Kerry support here, John, for the Kerry meet game afterwards. Brilliant point from Alan O'Shea. Absolutely, and uh, this is what you needed there. The, the infusion of, of fresh legs there. They brought Alan in there for John Martin Clifford there. And he's beginning to, to, to stamp his uh, print on, on this match. He certainly has. That's Alan O'Shea's first point of the day. It's now 17 points to Colossians. 16 to St. Charles College and the watch tells us three minutes gone in the second period of extra time but two are by no means out of this it's Damien Dunleavy Damien Dunleavy inside looking for James Kavanagh broken from him by Adrian Breen very near the sideline doing well is Adrian Breen he'll do very well if he doesn't foul him now near the sideline James Kavanagh does well for Tume Gary Galvin coming to meet him with a shoulder it's still James Kavanagh, plays it soccer style across to Killian Dupuyer. Killian Dupuyer getting inside, a shooting chance for Dupuyer. Here's a chance for Alan O'Hara, and that's a point for Toome. And up along the sideline here, brilliant work there, John, initially by James Kavanagh. James Kavanagh, yeah, but he should have been put out, built it out over the sideline there. He should never have been allowed to come up there, but he did. And uh, credit, credit, uh, yeah, we see Cramp there on the number eight uh, down there, Adrian Breen. Adrian is going down, that's his second or third time go, uh, going down with, with Cramp. Jack O'Connor, uh, Noel O'Shea and John Dargan, they're all worried men down there, mentors of uh, Kalash to Neskelga. So it's still in the melting pot, Gary. Almost certainly is, 17 points each. I wonder, could, would there be more extra time if they still finish level? Probably could be a five minute extra time, we're not quite sure. Well, we'll certainly know when we hear the end of Brian White's whistle. But so far, it's 17 points to St. Charles, it's 17 points to Kalash Nishkelige. A goal you'd feel for one team would wrap it up. But it might be done on points. Here's Brian Sheehan. Possession absolutely vital. Up they go for it. And Finton has lost out this time to Niall Coleman, who's played very well around the middle of the field too for St. Charlotte. Inside to Michael Meehan. Michael Meehan broken from him. Wayne O'Sullivan trying to do his best inside. But Meehan has it again. Here's David Ward. A chance for Ward. High from Ward and wide from Ward. Oh, that was a costly one. That was a let-off. Yeah, uh, a, a great move. Uh, and uh, uh, luckily for Kalashna Skelga, he left his shooting boots after him there, Ward, because uh, he is five points scored. I suppose we better not let this opportunity go. Would there be some crown times happen tonight if Kalashna Skelga win the, win the scene that he's uh, sponsoring the video there? Tim Cochran won Timby on a high. And not only will there be some crowd there, but they'll be there for a long time by the time they've seen the first of it to the extra time. They'll be looking for exemptions, I'd say, tonight. Gone down, injury now is a lot of them. Declan O'Sullivan has gone down. Adrian Breen has gone down. And I think um, David Ward has gone down there inside there as well. Um, 
It's still in the melting pot, 17 points each. There's not much more we can say about it. Brian Sheehan has the ball in his hands and is ready to kick it out. And uh, Brian White is telling him to get on with it. And Minters are coming off the pitch. And subs are running on and subs are warming up. And we're just, we're having everything here. And the crowds are coming in, ready for Kerry and Meath. But this is not over yet. Out to the kick, they go. Adrian Breen goes high. The break is important. That's gone off. A doom, uh, and that's going to be a Kalash Nishkelige ball. And this one is going to be taken here by Kieran Cronin. So, Kieran Cronin with the ball in his hand, ready down here in front of us. The stopwatch tells us six minutes gone. Low for Barry Murphy. Barry Murphy is going to be tackled if you don't get rid of it fairly quickly. Barry Murphy, now he's got himself in space. Now is the chance to move it. Now he does to Declan O'Sullivan. And Killian once again, Alan Buck has uh, the beauty of Declan inside there, John. Yes, very much. Uh, Declan has gone totally out of the game. He had a great first half in the, in the, in the actual game, but uh, uh, he's uh, anonymous. Uh, which all through the second half. And Alan Burke goes on one of these runs up the middle again. He's looking for a free. He's looking for anything. He's now gone through. A chance for O'Hara. Will he go for the point? He will. Oh, oh that was some miss by Alan O'Hara. Oh, God. Uh, we are, uh, are being left after the hook by uh, St. Jarvis at the moment. Uh, they've kicked uh, there a couple of uh, unbelievable wides right in front of the, the goal. Just so there's somebody looking after Kalashnikov's skill at the moment. And I see a number of forwards lining up there. Colin Martin, Brian Sullivan, um, and I think Barry Lynch, John Warmy called in. Yeah, well, fresh legs maybe are vital at this stage because uh, with fellas cramping and tiring and everything else, the mistakes are going to be made. Uh, can Kalashnikov get the vital score? 17 points each. The break has gone from him again, and St. Charles of Tume have it in the shape of John Devan. John Devan, 50 yards out from goal. High inside. Wayne will have to make sure of this. He has it. Alan O'Hara has it. Alan O'Hara outside to Michael Meehan. This must be a score, surely. Meehan high and Meehan over the bar. And the lead again for St. Charles College. And the stopwatch tells us seven minutes gone in the, in the second period. And it's looking good now for St. Charles. 18. Well, they've slipped into the lead, and again, Meehan, that's his sixth point of the, the afternoon, you know, and he's the one class act that you feel, you know, that separates these sides. He took his score, he can kick both, both with right and left. Can Collage to come back? We just have to wait and see. Gary. Brian Sheehan's kick out out to the middle of the field. There's three James Charlotte's been there. One of them is bound to get it. In fact, they don't, Josh. Away out on the far side is Michael Curran. Kieran Cronin doesn't spot him. Declan has it. Declan holds it. Declan is shooting, and Declan has scored it. What a score from Declan Sullivan. Well, he mightn't do anything for 55 minutes, but I'll tell you, John, give him one chance and he'll do it for you. This is uh, unbelievable stuff. Uh, uh, more fellas down again. We're cramped. That was a great move. Straight down, Declan. Just one look at the post over the bar. We're back in level terms, Gary. Just over eight minutes. To the, uh, one, one certain aspect, one, one statistic, John. How many times have they been level today? That I didn't keep in account of. But, uh, <laughs> no, Gary. No, Gary. If there's any... <laughs> Let's see. Uh, uh, right. Well, you were confused the last day. You were even more confused today. Oh, the kick out it goes and it's gathered by Niall Coleman. Or sorry, it's John Devan who has it. John Devan across field. This is Niall Coleman who has it now. Niall Coleman looking up again. 18 points each. Gary Galvin will come for this. Oh. Well held by young Barry Murphy. And Barry Murphy has it there in his own half back line and gives it now to Jershia. Jershia looked at being pulled and dragged, and he has. And it was an important chance that Jersey hit the deck because Brian White, I didn't think, was going to give that one. No, Brian is very low to, to give freeze at all today. He, he obviously doesn't see a lot of the, the fouls uh, demand this afternoon because from the word go, Job was being fouled there. But uh, un unless he fell, he wasn't, he wasn't getting a free. But this now could be a vital, uh, a vital one. Could be a vital one. And it's, David, it's Declan Sullivan who's outside here, just about 10 yards in from the far meter line exactly on the 45 meter line i hope he takes it from the correct spot because we all know what happened here last year he kicked a magnificent point but the, the, he wasn't allowed so declan o'sullivan with the 45 meter kick the stopwatch tells us there's nine minutes gone there's six minutes to go here comes declan 45 it's curling but it's not going to curl enough no it's not it's gone to the left and wide the scoreboard tells us saint charles college 18 points Kolasinus Gallagher, 18 points, and we have six minutes left. Six minutes left, uh, six uh, pulsating. I would think the next score could be the all important one, Gary. Can Kolasinus get it? We'll just have to wait and see. Well, the kick out now is important, and it's Donald Dowd. Donald Dowd to take it. Corner of the square, kicking it out, looking for Shane Morden. Gone over his head. Will it go out over the sideline? Yes, it will. It's a line ball to Kolash Nishkelige and Kieran Granfield takes it quickly and good running by Declan Declan O'Sullivan a point is important can Declan do taking on his man to Barry Murphy this fella
point if anyone does. Here comes Barry. Oh, unfortunate. Lost and dispossessed by James Kavanagh inside there. And James Kavanagh, who has been effective since he's come out. A ball for Aidan Connor. Gary Galvin going for it. And Gary Galvin beats Sanu. He's tackled very heavily there by Michael Meehan. No need of that there, John, I would think. Very, very uh, over-robust. Well, I, you know, the heat of battle, I wouldn't be uh, too harsh on, on, on Michael Meal. Uh, we see Paul McGill, uh, number 17, is going to join the, the action for whom we shall have to wait and see, but he's, he's tugged out there on the sideline be giving last minute instructions well Paul McGill will certainly come into the half back or the half back line or the full back line uh, club man of my own of course Paul McGill he's playing very well this year playing senior football with the Skelly Rangers team he will be called in here at no doubt somewhere along the half back line still down injured is Gary Galvin and now John they're falling like flies out there oh yeah but it's to be expected it's because the pace of this game it's been unrelenting right from the start you know the credit these young fellas credit their trainers credit themselves the fitness levels real but they, they get up and they get on with it great credit to them every one of them being absolutely outstanding ambassadors for the game of football today now where were we we were a free we lost where we were it's a free and it's Kieran Cronin Kieran Cronin has had a whale of a game for Colossian Skellige back to Kieran Granfield his club mate Kieran Granfield jersey tugged play away says the referee over the top for George Shea but he'd want to be an aeroplane to get that one it's 18 points to St. Charles, it's 18 to Colossus Gallagher. Very wasteful there, a direct ball down the centre would pay better dividends there, you know, too much uh, hesitation on the part of Colossus today now. And coming in now. Michael Corden has it now. Still Michael oh, Corden yeah. pulled to the ground and pushed and it's a free to Kalash Nishkelega. They're still level in the 45 metre line. Declan Sullivan has it. Declan winning the ball, holding on to it, giving it now to Alan O'Shea. Alan O'Shea took a lot of steps. The referee says play away. Oh yes, what a score from Alan O'Shea. 19-18, Kalash Nishkelega hit the front again. Well, what a, that's his second score since he came in. What a sub to bring in. He knows where the post is. This young lad from Waterfield, that was an, outst uh, an outstanding score. Scores, uh, Mother Christ, uh, if he'd been in there, maybe his collapse would be out the gate. Three minutes left. 1918. What a game of football. And up goes Coleman for St. Charles and College. Back come. And back they'll come. And Coleman is one whale of a footballer. He, along with Darren Mullally, Michael Meehan, they've been outstanding for St. Charles College. High again and dangerous again. Meehan and Wayne. Wayne breaks it. Here's Meehan. Meehan has it. Looking up. Gives it across to Ward. A chance for Ward to shoot. Ward puts it over the bar and they level again. Unbelievable. 14 time, Gary. They've been leveled this afternoon. And I'd say you could put another one onto the 14th. It's 19 points to St. Charles. It's 19 points to Glasgow. Skellige. Stopwatch tells us two minutes to go. Will there be another period of extra time? There could very well be. Kerry and Meath John might be postponed till next week. Well, uh, <laughs> that's a possibility, Gary. This is a classic. Well, certainly. This is one whale of a. A humdinger, as they call it, and I see your man now, David Ward, has gone in full forward, Mean is out in the 40. Back it comes again, and Kavanagh has it. And Kavanagh to uh, Alan Flaherty, into the middle, comes, oh, there was a shoulder there. Man, loose Coleman, man. loose man, chance for them. Um, Michael Meehan, Michael Meehan must shoot, Michael Meehan does. And they're level, they're not level, they're going into the lead. 20 points to 19 with a minute to go. This surely, I would think, John, will Colossus is going to come back from this one. I, 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 I hope that... I, I... I'm afraid, you know, I think that could be the, they're finishing the stronger again, Galway. It's a, you know, no team deserves to lose it, really. A draw would be a fair result. It's going to be a heartbreak here this afternoon. It looks like Kalash Nuskel get the heartbreak as far at the moment. They're a point down. Can they come back? We'll just have a wait, wait and see. Ref is checking with the linesman for what time. He's yeah. checking with the linesman. Jack O'Connell's having a word with him as well. There is going to be one minute of extra time. So now that says there's going to be two minutes to go. So two proper minutes, one of extra time. He's having a chat with the linesman down there. Jack O'Connor telling Jersey to go in. Still no substitute has come on since. Paul McGill and Barry Lynch were warm and come into the action. But Kalash and Skellige, should they draw a level? They deserve to draw a level. Will they do it? It's putting it up to them. Now we'll see what's going to happen. The kick out is by Brian Sheehan. Minters everywhere. Brian Sheehan coming into the action is Barry Lynch. Here comes Brian Sheehan out to the middle. Kalash Skelligan needs to get it. Up goes Benton, but he's punched it to a place where there is no man from Kalash Skelligan. And it's Paul Costello who's over there. Paul Costello back to Darren Mullally. Mullally looking up, taking his time. Still Mullally. Left footed for Mullally. Down the throat to Michael Curran. Michael Curran, the Waterville man. Being tackled there by Killian Depoyer. Still Michael Curran. High inside for Alan O'Shea again. Alan O'Shea, has he got it? He has. 
Looking for the free, touch to the ground, play away, says the referee. It's James Kavanagh. James Kavanagh coming out of defence. Still Kavanagh, ships two heavy challenges. Took too many steps and it's a free in. Quickly taken by Granfield. My voice is not going to stick it. Here's Alan Shea. Yes, they level. We are level again. Jesus, this is outstanding stuff all again. This is Shea. What a point. What a point. Just one look at the goal and let's fly. Oh, Lord, Gary, I've never seen, I've been a long time watching football, but this is simply unreal. It's it's all over again. Is there going to be another period of extra time? We're going to run out of tape. We're going to run out of everything. They're going down with cramp. There is a standing ovation from the stand and from the terraces here. It's 20 points each. 20 points each. We are stopped here. It's all over again, and they are still left. 20 points. St. Charles, St. Charles, 20 unreal. points to Colossus Gallagher. Alan O'Shea took it out of the fire with the last kick of the game from about 30 yards. No look at the goal, just swung around his third point since he came on as the sub. What a sub to have on your team. Well, certainly no team deserves to lose it. We're going to take a break again for a few minutes. I presume there's going to be extra time again. It's 20 points to St. Charles, it's 20 points to Colossus Gallagher. Joining me here now, just uh, before the Kerry Meath game, Weeshi forward to your radio, Kerry. Weeshi, what a game of football, that college's game. Well, Gary, I can tell you anyway, I'm absolutely limp after I'm watching football for a long, long number of years. And in relation to college's football, that was the best game of college's football that I have ever seen. And I think it would be hard to, to, to rival it no matter where you go. There have been great games, but both, I was delighted actually that it was a draw, Gary, that there wasn't any loser because none of the two teams deserved to lose. It was a scintillating game of football, superbly refereed by Brian White. They were a credit to the men on both sides that trained them. The skill and the running and the fitness and the, and the, and the point kicking and building and everything it was something that you'll probably never see again now that might be a big statement to make the only thing Gary I'd say about it is, is I think it was wrong to play extra time I think it was wrong to ask those young men from Kerry and Galway to go through another 30 minutes especially at the pace of the game and the way it was going it was an all Ireland semi-final there was an awful lot at stake and I think it was wrong to put them through that it was a superb game and of course uh, uh, David Ward and Michael Meehan the centre forward and the full forward for a uh, and Charles of Toome. Uh, Stockwell and Purcell, Frankie Stockwell and, and Purcell, they came from Galway many years ago, and of course they came from that. And these two men now would be replicas of them. They're scoring, in particular, Michael Meehan, the full forward. He was absolutely superb. And their, their centre back, Darren Mullaney, the, his runs they were absolutely wonderful. But what about our own fellas? And the substitution, Valen O'Shea, those three points that he kicked at the end there. Declan dropped out of it for a small while, but when he was wanted, he came into the, the end. But generally, overall, I, was, I won't be signalling out any of the, of the Kalash and the Skellige team, because every single one of them, from the goalkeeper up to corner forward, they were a credit to South Kerry, a credit to their school, and a credit to their county. It was a riveting game of football, and I, for one, said it during the commentary to Radio Kerry, I was hoping there wasn't going to be a loser. I'd hate to see any of the two teams, Gary, going home today after, lo after losing. What can you say about it? It was only the best game of college football I have ever seen. Well done to everybody concerned.